Thank you for joining us on our journey here to preserve the history of mixed martial arts. When I wanted to take on this project, I needed help. I brought in one of my favorite matchmakers, Miguel Iterate, and the MMA detective, Mike Davis. So to do this, we've been able to preserve history. Welcome and enjoy. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another fantastic episode. Uh, very excited for our guest we have here. Uh, one of the guys, old school like myself, but not only that, was on the Ultimate Fighter Season 4 with me. Got to hang out with him. Uh, one of the best jiu-jitsu practice practitioners you're going to find in the game. Travis Luter. Travis, how the hell are you doing, buddy? Doing great, Chris. How are you doing, man? Man, I couldn't be any better. Just uh, staying busy all the time. Um, my crazy ass is... Uh, transition to, I'm doing commentary for the bare knuckle fighting now <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of that that's awesome man that's something else. it's, that's it's pretty, pretty, cool. it's pretty it's fun cool. to watch we're hoping to get down to Texas here soon so, so I'm gonna if we're around you I'm gonna make sure you force you to come watch it'll be fun yeah it'd be fun I'd, I'd love to love to let me know Good. <laughs> so okay um you know a lot of times when I know a little bit about you but a lot of people don't so what I would like to find out is like what did you do growing up what got you involved were you a soccer player wrestler and then how did you transition into fighting how did you start what would your what would your what did you do growing up um i grew up on a small town in south dakota um you know it's like to go to school was 30 miles away um, you know it's like yeah it's 30 miles uh, one way to go just go to school it was like an hour and a half bus ride every day uh as a kid to go to school and well and you know in before that, I went to a country school. So in sixth grade, uh, we, we started going to the big school. And it's like, uh, you know, and so in the sixth grade, you know, I thought that there was no way that my parents would support me going to uh, wrestling. Uh, so I didn't even ask. I just brought the flyer home. And my mom saw it. And she's like, do you want to wrestle? And I was like, yeah, I'd like to, but I don't see how I can get to practice. And she's, you know, so they arranged it with a neighbor and stuff like that. So I... Uh, I started wrestling in sixth grade and then I wrestled through there in high school and college. And, uh, and then I eventually uh, ended up, you know, doing the whole, you know, you know, just getting into martial arts, you know, by, because of the UFC. Hoist Gracie is the reason that I ended up doing what I was doing, so. So, so like you were a good wrestler and, and that kind of transitioned to why you kind of really fell in love with jujitsu because it's a pretty, Easy transition. You just learn that you can go to your back and stuff. Is that, is that how it kind of went? You just yeah. So wrestling I, you know, living in South Dakota, there's of course no jujitsu. You know, it's like, and this is 1993 when the UFC started. I, I saw the first one. I was like, I have to learn. You know, it's like uh, watching Hoist do what he did and stuff like that, and beating these wrestlers that were bigger than I was and better the better wrestlers than I was. I was like, I have to learn. You know, it's like watching him, like when he beat, you know. Ken Shamrock and Dan Severin and guys like that. I was like, you know, okay, these, these, you know, these guys are bigger than me. Um, I, I really need to learn jujitsu. And so I bought the Henzo Gracie, Craig Kukux tapes. And, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, I did some research and figured out that the, the other tapes that were out weren't as good as Henzo's. And so I bought Henzo's and, you know, started teaching myself, you know, like move the furniture out of the living room and, uh, you know, and drill there and then go up to the wrestling room at college and, and train with the guys that would come train with me and figuring it out. Um, you know, it's like I broke one of my buddies' sternums, you know, like one of the first times we rolled. Stuff like that. Um, you know, we we're just rough, you know, just wrestlers. And, uh, um, he wasn't a wrestler though. It's like in his defense, he was a Muay Thai guy. And, uh, you know, so he'd never been on the ground and, you know, broke, broke his sternum. So he couldn't train for a bit. Um, and then I eventually moved to Texas uh, to train with Carlos Machado. Um, he's, you know, he, he, there was three places basically in the United States that, from my research at the time that you could go to, to train jujitsu. You had New York with Henzo. Uh, you could go to the, to go to California, go to LA. And there was a couple different places in, you know, California you could go to. Uh, and then, then Carlos Machado was in Dallas. And I, I came to Dallas because it was, you know, cost of living and things like that. I was looking at, you know, being from South Dakota, you know, I didn't have any money. I didn't, you know, I just wanted to train. So it's like, I came here because cost of living was a lot cheaper. And uh, so I moved to Texas. 
Very wait, smart, wait. man. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead, Miguel. I, I was just going to say, so let me get this straight, because I knew you from Texas. I knew you as a Carlos Machado student. Yeah. Your whole reason for being in Texas was jujitsu and to train with him. Yeah, I moved to wow. Texas to train with Carlos. You know, I, saw, I was in college, and I had a year left of school, and I uh, figured out that I, I'd never heard of it before, but I became a national exchange student. Instead of a foreign exchange student, uh, they offer a program. <laughs> where you can change schools and go to school and pay your school, but you get to go go to a different school if, if they offer it in between the schools. So I transferred from uh, Northern State University in South Dakota to a, a UNT in, in Texas to finish my last year. And so I moved here in August and I uh, got an opportunity to open a school in January. Uh, I was training and I was doing privates with a guy. I came down as a blue belt. You know, it's like I got my blue belt before I got here. Um, and so it's like I walked in. I was one of the better jujitsu guys in Texas at the time. It was brand new. It's like, you know, uh, um, I had been making trips down here. I drove down five or six times to train. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like I'd come down over Christmas break, uh, spring break. I'd come down in the summer. And I did that six times over two years. I came down here. And so it's like the first five times I came, I'm beating everybody other than Carlos, of course. Uh, you know, but that last time I came, I, 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 you know, people had caught up. I was getting triangled, stuff like that. And, uh, I, and I didn't really have a guard. I could play on top, you know, but it, it's a wrestler. So it's like going against the non-wrestlers and I'm going to take them down and stuff like that. But um, so I moved to Texas and, you know, it's like in a, and, and I wasn't the best guy for a few months. And then I became the best guy. Uh, and then I, had, I was doing privates with this guy and like where I was helping. And then it ended up, he was driving all the way from Fort Worth, all the way over to, to Dallas. It was over an hour drive. And, and he offered me a spot in his warehouse to come teach there. And I do privates with Carlos and then I do privates with him. And, um, you know, and that's how I started my school. So, and I dropped out of school. Uh, I never finished school. I'm still six credits short. Oh my <laughs> gosh. 20, 20 years later to run my school. It's like, uh, so that's, I just, you know, I, I probably should go back and finish it just to be a good example for my kids, but yeah. I haven't made the move to do it yet. What, uh, what year did you move to Texas? What year was it back then? 1997, 1997. So. You know, what's funny is I was, I was talking with the guy who first get, who I first rolled with in 1998, uh, just the other day. And it was just amazing. Like I remember him saying, man, this guy's a blue belt and being a blue belt, there was like five in the state, maybe, you know what right. I mean? So if you were that level back in 98 and I, 97 had to be even, I mean, that was a huge, I mean, maybe there was only two guys. And I don't remember there was just, that was a huge deal. So you, it sounds crazy. If somebody said right now, you open a school and you're a blue belt, but, you were head and shoulders above everybody else around you back then. It was just a different era. So one of the guys that I trained with, he won. You remember uh, in for jujitsu, they had the Pan Ams in Hawaii. And he had went there and he won it. I think it was 98 when he won it. And then I went up against him at a tournament, uh, a local tournament. And I beat him. I subbed him. And so he had won the Pan Am as a blue belt. And I, I beat him. And then so um, – my buddy who helped me open a school, he sponsored me to go to Brazil and compete. And, and I took second there. I, I lost in the finals as a blue belt uh, in 98, you know, was, uh, you know, 10 months after I moved to Texas. So, wow. Yeah, man. So, so you, you get down there, you start opening a school. How does, do you think you're just going to do jujitsu or, or you, you're a fan of the UFC you're already thinking I'm going to compete in, in, in MMA or which was NHB back then or whatever you want to call it fight yeah so we we uh you know I got had an offer in 98 to fight you know it's like uh, but it was pancreas you know it's like open palm yeah because uh, it wasn't legal in Texas you know think about that you know it's like MMA was not legal in Texas we had to fight here and so, you know, it's like I had two fights there. I got paid a hundred dollars a piece for them. Uh, and nice. then I decided I didn't, I, that, that's not enough money. And that's where Miguel comes in. And uh, um, he, you know, a few years later, he offered me to fight in Indiana uh, in an actual MMA fight. And so that was, uh, you know, kind of 
that 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 was my introduction to it was hundred dollar fights you know it's like in 1998 no money miguel how did you how did you hear of travis Luter? what made you offer him a fight we uh we did a show in wichita falls texas and around that show we did uh, the Abu Dhabi qualifier for well, look, his Miguel, class. Would, would you guys mind if we start from the beginning? Because we're kind yeah, of, yeah. we're jumping. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we November 7th, 1998. Yeah, November 7th, 1998. You fought for Power Ring Warriors. Yes. Okay, yeah. who was the promoter for that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fought for him twice. I actually fought for him earlier that year. Yeah, it's like that one doesn't show up on my record. Uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, so I fought for him twice that year. I fought in that one, I think is in Houston. Um, and then the one before that was in, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and he's against James he, Cooper. Anthony Macias, who had fought in the UFC, he was the headliner for that event. Um, and he, he won, he beat up somebody. I, I think Yves Edwards was at the, the second one. He knocked out wow. a guy real bad. Uh, it's like, you know, so some of these local guys, I forget if Pete Spratt was there. I think he was. Uh, um, it gets all blurry, but Yeats was uh, for sure there. He knocked out a guy bad, bad. Was, was a Guy Metzger face. there? Guy, I don't remember if he was at the, the one. I don't remember. You know, it's like Guy was, guy was affiliated. They, they ran the these ones at this dance place and he, he was going to those a lot. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, and now in 1998, I hadn't met Guy Metzger at that point either. You know, it's like, I started training with him in I think 99, I was introduced to him through Rico Rodriguez. Uh, Rico came to train with Carlos and he invited me uh, after training to go train with the guys at the Lions then I was like, okay, yeah. And it's like, and so I showed up the next day and, and, and I met Guy. And, uh, stuff like that, and then they invited me to keep coming. So that that was that's how I got to training with those guys. Not to not to you know ask too much, but I mean, how did it go when you were training with the guys in the Lions? Did you, I mean, we just did you feel like you were he, doing really well? How was that? You know, those guys there, those guys were bigger than I was. You know, it's, but I did just fine. You know, and I had the jujitsu, and they didn't. You know, it's like my jujitsu isn't. You know. I was a blue purple belt at the time uh, when I started training with those guys, um, you know, and I did really, really well. And it's like, and, you know, and, and that, you know, uh, some of them, you know, a guy's a good wrestler. A guy can wrestle. Uh, you know, some of the other guys were decent wrestlers. They had a really good wrestling coach, um, you know, and we had a really, really good time. You know, it's like, it was, uh, it was rough, you know, rough, rough training. <laughs> I didn't meet Ken. I met Ken in, in Japan, but I didn't train with Ken until he was training for that first Tito fight in the UFC. And I said, he came to Dallas and came to Dallas for that, for that fight. Um, and we were, you know, we helped him get ready for that one. So it's like, uh, but that, that was the first time that I ever trained with Ken was that's what 2002, 2001, something like that. I, I feel like that, that group was definitely more of like a catch wrestling style in a fight yeah. style as opposed to straight jujitsu. Yeah. I, I, I got a question for you. So, you know, Lions Den, obviously, as you mentioned, a, an early big school, a good place to be. Carlos Machado, yeah. a great place to learn jujitsu. Any politics between the two? You know, the jujitsu guys don't like you going over to the Lions Den, or, or am I wrong? Um, I, I didn't have any problems, you know, because it's like I was enough of a wrestler that they didn't really – uh bother me it's like you know guy you know jiu-jitsu for guy at the time was was kind of a cuss word uh you know it's like you know it's like he he you know it's like he 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 didn't like a lot of the things you know it's like pulling guard or something like that he really disliked uh but you know at the end of the day it was good training you know it's like and if you're doing well with the guys they didn't care you know they they're going to be fighting jiu-jitsu guys so they were very very happy to uh to you know have you you know have them help you you know it's like and i'm just going up there i want to train i'm i want to uh i've done muay thai i've done jkd uh stuff like that in south dakota uh but that was the extent of my stand-up you know so it's like me getting to come in and you know uh 
uh, learned some stand up, and eventually they introduced me to boxing coaches. And uh, you know, it's like, and we're sparring, you know. So it's like, you know, a guy was figuring it out, kind of as you go, trial by fire. Uh, you know, it's like, but I didn't ever, you know, I didn't ever know if I was even part of the Lions Den. You know, it's like it wasn't, you know, it's like because the Lions Den kind of like was started before then, and you know, I was. I came in later, you know, I didn't go through their 500 squats and stuff like that. I just came in as a training partner and it's like, you know, and I mean, it really wasn't until I started traveling with guy a little bit that, you know, I figured out, okay, I guess I am kind of part of, part of the guys and stuff like that. I was just going over there. They invite me to come train and I come train. So with James Cooper, you win by decision. Yeah. And at that point, did you realize, I mean, it sounds like you've, sacrificed your entire life prior to this to get to James <laughs> Cooper you know usually at that point people make the decision whether MMA and the combat sports lifestyles for them but it sounds like that decision had already been made in your mind well you know I was I, I wasn't you know I wanted to train jiu-jitsu uh, I was more of a jiu-jitsu guy uh, that happened to do MMA you know it's like uh Hey, can I shut this thing off quick? Yeah, yeah go ahead. These robots, like, They're off. fine. Yeah. Whatever you need to do. <coughs> so after he made that hundred bucks, Mike, he must have been like, yeah, this is for yeah. me. <laughs> hey, there's, uh, if I can make a hundred dollars a day, I mean, why not? You know, it's like I'd made up my mind I wanted to train. I, I, I wanted to train. I was, you know, I, I didn't fight, you know, for however many years after that. Um, you know, but simply because there was no money, you know, it's like, I didn't want to get paid a hundred dollars. I broke this, this cheekbone in my fight with an open palm or a knee or whatever the hell he, you know, Cooper oh. was me with. you know, it's like, so this was fracture. I got a hole in, you know, like a, you can indent your finger, you know, the side of my face right there. hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. A hundred dollars. I was like, I'm not doing this for a hundred dollars. You know, it's like, and, uh, you know, it's like, I'll fight, but I don't want to pay. I don't want to do it for a hundred dollars. That, that seems silly to me. And it's like, so, you know, so was your, was your jujitsu school, like doing well, were you getting a lot of members there? Is, was that growing pretty fast? And no, no, it was terrible. Like it was surviving, <laughs> it, you know, it's like, I, I made enough money to train. And that's all okay. I cared about. Was I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to train more than anything if that makes you know, sense. you know what's funny travis is everybody i know from our era of fighting has got that same thing where it's like wasn't really making any money doing it but it's just like all i want to do is find out a way to train twice a day you know what i mean right. it was like I, I was i was going in right at, at noon and then i was trying to come back at night it's like everybody i know just they got obsessed with it and they just you kind of give up a lot for it. you don't realize it at the time but looking back like that was not a smart thing, but you just kind of, you get hooked and you have to do it. Yeah, it, it was really, it didn't feel like a choice. It just felt like, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is, this is what I do now. And it's like, exactly. yeah, I'm, I don't have any money, you know, it's like, but it's like, you know, but I, I wasn't afraid of working, you know, it's like, so I had lots of classes and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know, but it's like, there was, there was definitely times like when I did the ultimate submission showdown, you know, it's like I spent my last $500 to go out there. My plan was to win. You know, it's like, it was like, I have to win the ultimate submission showdown or I can't pay my bills this month. And, and it's like, and so, and I won and it's like, and I, I, you know, it's like, I won $5,000 in the finals, uh, um, you know, which for at the time was huge for me. Um, yeah, I, I, I tore my ACL. Uh, like in, the, in, the, in that final match and I almost tapped because it, it hurt you know it, it hurt I was in lockdown and, and I was going forward and I didn't know how to deal with it I was just going forward and I tore my own ACL just jerking and uh, um, I didn't have money to get it fixed or anything like that I never even got it uh, MRI until I'm in the UFC you know at the tail end of my career um, and I, I, I went and Finally, I, I, I had a surgeon that had looked at it. He, he, had, he thought that it was probably, you know, I didn't have an ACL, um, you know, but so I fought all my UFC fights, all that stuff like that. <laughs> on the, you know, when, I, when we were on the thing, uh, on, the, on the show, The Ultimate Fighter, I didn't have an ACL. And so I had surgery after that. And I, I gave the surgeon explicit instructions, do not fix my ACL. 
And, and the reason is, is it's like, I didn't know for sure if it was tore until he got into the surgery. Uh, Cause I didn't, couldn't afford a damn, you know, I didn't want to spend the extra money cause I, I didn't have insurance. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, I, you know, the UFC wasn't paying for it. You know, this, this is keep it in mind. This is after I fought Anderson, Anderson Silva, you know, this is, it's the, like, um, you know, and they, uh, um, it's cheap about an MRI, I didn't get an MRI and I just, you know, I, we had a discussion. So it's like, but I had this with the assistant. I didn't have it with the head, head surgeon. Oh. And so they stopped surgery and they, they discuss it for, you know, they said, you know, five minutes. Like a football huddle? <laughs> Everybody get over here. No, because I knew that that would be the end of my career. You know, it's like, I knew I didn't have time. Yeah. You know, it's like, I fought all this time. If the ACL is gone, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, don't think. You know, it's like, I, it's, uh, you know, I don't want to spend the next year trying to rehab my knee. I want no. to keep fighting. And uh, um, so that was, that was, uh, that's what they did. You know, Crazy. now on a totally different note, talk about the, the insurance being a factor. I always thought it was hilarious at the, after, when we were first fighting UFC, after UFC, everybody went to the hospital. Be like, you might, your fight mask might last in 30 seconds. Like, anybody need to go to the hospital? People are going like, yeah, uh, my hand hurt in my back and my name's like, you did all that in the fight? Yep. No, you didn't. That was just the only time they could get health care. It was just hilarious how all these fights, everybody was at the hospital trying to get taken care of. I thought it was funny. But yeah, well, you know, it's like, okay, so when we were on the Ultimate Fighter, I, I, you were on the other team, so you probably don't know, but I tore my pack. The day no, after my first that. fight, I tore my pack. I've got a big hole in my chest right here if I take my shirt off you know this pec is all deformed and it's like you know so it's like I couldn't train in between then and when I fought Drago uh really? you know, so it's like the day after I, I I yeah it's like so I shot in on Jorge he sprawled and I pulled my arm back and I wasn't warm all the way ah. and it tore this pec and so I've got this big hole right here and they you know I went to the doctor out there and they they, they explained listen you can you know if we we, we can fix this but you know you're done like, but you're gonna you're done and i'm like i'm not doing that it's like so so i just didn't tell anybody and and uh you know wow. and just and just you know went through the rest of the show you know it's like after i got done fight drago that that arm was so you know I, I was purple before but like the next day it was just it was just stupid it was down to my elbow you know down to here because i tore it remember i had him in the camaro uh, you know, where I'm trying to finish it. I was like, fuck this. This is hurting me way more than it's hurting him. You know, because I was pulling and it's like, you know, time to tighten up that pack. Um, you know, it's like, and then it's like, well, and then afterwards, you know, it's like I talked to him and it's like, do you want to fix it? No, I don't want to fix it because I, I got to fight freaking to make the actual money. I got to go fight freaking uh, Patrick Cote in the finals in months. And then it's like, you know, so no, I, it's, I've just never had it fixed. You know, it's, it's Man. just... I tore my butt pack a few about six months ago, and uh, yeah, well, no, no, I mean, shit, it was about a few, uh, two years ago, I forget, but then uh, yeah, that's messed up. I'm not sure how you can, can were you able to train at all still on the, on the show? No, just, I, the trained, I trained lightly, uh, you know, because that, you know, so it's like my, I, I was one of the first fights on the show. Uh, yeah, I, and, and so I had three weeks, you know, before the, you know until my next fight, and so I rolled like three days. All I did was run. All I did was run, and wow. I couldn't really lift because it's like you know anything with this pack, I could do stuff with this arm, you know, and I could spar a little bit with one hand and stuff like that. But it was just no, I, I really you know I trained you know just that you know I, I I was lucky I was still in good shape from you know, before that, you know, cause I fought right before I went on the show. Uh, I fought like three weeks before and I'd fought earlier that year. So I was in good shape from that, you know, but it's like, uh, um, yeah, on the show, I couldn't train the last two and a half weeks. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you to let, your, go, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, we gotta let Mike get back on track here, but so far we got a broken cheekbone, uh, uh, you, three injuries. I, I I forgot about it. Waiting for the, for the, <laughs> yeah, the, pack, you, know, you had a broken cheap on the pack and the five. You made knee. five thousand bucks for the meat for the minute. Might take over. Yeah, <laughs> Hold okay. on, one, one more thing, real quick. I was gonna say to your team's credit, I never heard of that till right now. So they kept that very quiet. That's good. Yeah, yeah we. You know, it's like I'm not sure how many of them knew. You know, it's like it was. Oh, just, you didn't tell that. Okay, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell anybody. 
you know, it's like, it's just, you know, it's like you train it today. Nope. You know, it's like, you know, and it's like, and if I went out and trained, I just didn't tell anybody it hurt. I didn't want to, I didn't trust anybody to not tell. Okay. Okay. You know? I, I thought that you knew they been telling. Yeah. Wow. That's, they would have told, you know what I mean? They would have got out. Yeah, exactly. It's like, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna know. It's like, yeah, you guys know I'm hurt. You know, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, it's like, then it's, you know, it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna have to do this. It's gonna hurt. You know, it's like, it's just the way it is, you know? So, so in 2000, November 18, 2000, you did a grappling tournament for hook and shoot. Yeah. That was for the ADCC trials. Am I correct? Yes. See, Miguel, you and I had a little confusion on that. It was called hook and shoot fusion. It was an eight man grappling tournament. Marcelo Grasso, the capital BJJ owner, was your was your first opponent. Okay. And okay. then it was Ivan Salivary. Oh, tough. Yeah. That's he's, the he's second going. one. That's the second one. That's not in Texas. That's in Indiana. So that 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 was uh, you know, and that first guy was uh was a uh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember him. But that was in that was in Indiana. So that's the second uh second tournament oh. we did. Yeah, so he did two trials, but first I think that's the that's the oh, key. Okay. He did two trials. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where kind of the, the confusion there in lays. Yeah. So was it held in different cities? Yeah. Yeah. So we did one in Texas, we did one in Texas, and then the next year we did the other one in Indiana. So it's like, you know, I I I, I um I think I flew up. I flew up to Indiana and uh um and, and did that one you know and, and it's like you know and a guy was you know it's the guy uh, to do that you had to pay your own way it was just like you know um to, once you won then you got to, then they give you a ticket in a hotel uh and they paid you the first year they did not pay me the second year uh to go to to adcc we had an agreement but not it's not miguel's fault that was fucking you know, the, the sheik decided to be a tight ass and didn't pay us. So, uh, so here it is. You fight Marcelo Grasso in Texas. Yeah, I do Ivan Salivary, you beat him by decision. Ivan Salivary gets injured. You, you, you mean, beat- I, I'm one of the few guys that has a knockout in uh, ADCC. Yeah, it's like I started arguing with the ref. Um, I thought I should have got points. And it's like, you know, it's like, so I'm arguing with the ref and I kind of turned my back to him. And he, he did a cartwheel to try to take my back uh, um, as I was, as I was grappling because so, I was arguing and being a dumbass. And uh, um, he's trying to take my back in and he grabs for my, to, for my throat without any hooks, without a seatbelt. And I bumped and he lands on his head and, and knocks himself out. I mean, he's out, out, you know, it's like, and they give him five minutes and he can't walk. You know, it's like, and, and Ivan couldn't walk. And so that was the end of the match. They had to call it at that point. So, and then I fought uh, Sean G. Ribeiro and- uh, um, Yeah, Alexandre. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, Ribeiro, uh, Ribeiro beats uh, Nick Serra, beats yeah. Steve Rusk from MFS, who is absolute yeah. stud, meets you in the finals, yeah. and then you earn your spot to go to the ADCC. Yes. Yep. Okay. And that's the second. That's the second year that I won. That's the second year I won. The first year, um, I beat some other guys. You know, it's like uh, I don't remember exactly who they were, but I. I you Did know, you? I I, yeah. The in ninety. The first year in Texas. Uh, part of it is Mike. I think the first that first year we did just one tournament. Uh, each show. So we did the tournaments. Like we didn't have all five qualifiers until all five shows were complete. So he okay. just did his tournament. I remember your tournament. If I, I remember you fought, did you fight Rainy Martinez, Don Fry student? I don't know. I okay, don't know. <laughs> that's cool. And I understand, but I, I do believe in the first round you got Rainy Martinez, uh, Don uh, Don Fry student. Don was at the show. Don yeah, Don and, was there. Don was there. He was funny. Yeah, the guy. Everybody thinks Don's funny, right? <laughs> Don was funny because it's like, you know, they were like, okay, uh, he was he was he was really confused by the rules. You know, it's like okay, you can win by you can win by submission. Okay, but it's like, but no points are scored in the first five minutes, and that just threw him off. You know, it's like he just okay, so if I win by submission in the first five minutes, we keep going. No, and it's like this <laughs> this four or five times to Don. And it's like, you know, I think it was just mostly pissed that you could get submitted and lose it. 
and and that's what Rainy did. Unfortunately, I think Rainy wore shoes, and I don't know that I don't remember if it was a leg. Bad idea. But and and I don't remember some of the other guys in the tournament, but I remember Travis applied. Had a student there. I think I I fought Jeremy Horn's student in the first match, and he wore shoes too. And it's like you know everybody was wearing shoes, and it's like, and I was doing a lot of heel hooks back then, and that that was. The, the shoes help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. That first tournament is where where he stood out because he comes in, he applies, and at this point, this is this is the very first Abu Dhabi trials that we're doing. So at this point, the level is is not everybody. I don't have fifteen stud applicants like I did in a future years. You know, John De Rivera was not in this tournament. You know, Travis was a, a blue or purple belt, and he clearly showed he was the class of the tournament. And I remember. He was confident beforehand. Like he, you could tell he was very much the same way he is now. He was very confident before the tournament. And then afterwards, he kind of didn't say much. He just, he kind of wanted to say kind of, I told you so kind of thing. He was, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's very much his personality. But it really he expected him, to win. Yeah. He, he had no doubt in his mind from the very beginning. I, I could see that. And I, you know, at the end of the day, that tournament in Texas, I think was easy for him. Yeah, that was the, the first one. Yeah, it was, you know, it, it didn't have the level of guys that the second one did. The second one was, you know, it was a higher level. Um, you know, it's like, you know, I, I feel really lucky to, you know, did as well as I did. And, and you know, it's, it was cool that I got to compete against, you know, somebody like Zande, who, you know, Zande wasn't Zande at that time. You know, it's like this is before, you know, he was he was really good and stuff like that. But I think he was 18, 19 years old, 19 years old, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, you yeah, know, it was Salo's brother. Yeah, you know, Ivan was tough. You know, he's a UFC guy. It's like, uh, there, you know, it, it was fun. You know, Nick, Nick, uh, you know, being a, um, a Sarah, Matt, Sarah's brother, you know, it's like, you know, that's the first time I met Matt. Um, so it was, it was fun. It was good. I knew he was good. You know, it's like, uh, I knew Zande was good. And so, you know, cause I knew his brother, Salo. So. So you compete the 2001 ADCC tournament. Yeah. Um, you had said that there were some issues in regards to your ticket and stuff. Man, I'm still mad about that. It's like, <laughs> I hold a grudge, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> They, they 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 decided not to pay us you know it's like and i told miguel when i got off the plane you know it's like when i got to my hotel room we're not gonna pay this year and it's like and he's like no 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 you're gonna get paid you're gonna get paid i'm like no we're not getting paid this year you know and we didn't get paid but it's like uh you can just tell that they and it's like and i i remember going back to guy nevin's uh, apartment you know, they have the after party after the tournament's over and, and I got invited back to his apartment and he was bragging to somebody that this this tournament cost him a million dollars less like you motherfucker you know it's like that's my money <laughs> it's like you know, it's <laughs> like, you know him and Rico had got into it because Rico didn't get paid either and Rico was pissed and it's like you know Rico's a past winner and um, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's like, listen, I, I, at the time, you know, I, I really viewed it as I'm out here to entertain the sheep and, and I didn't get paid. It's like, you know, it's, but it is what it is. You know, it's like, it's, it's unfortunate, but you know, it's, it's not the only time I haven't got paid in my career. Hell, the UFC still owes me $36,000. So that, that's really, all. yeah, yep. 36 that, uh, that hundred, th- you know, remember that Dana announced, uh, Chris will remember this. Uh, yeah. you know, the Zions was going to give us uh, that 100000 100, Yeah, so it's like I had to get a lawyer to get part of the money. And I only got 64000 of it. And I got 64000 because I hired a lawyer. And I got me and Matt $64,000. And they declared bankruptcy 88 days later. Oh. What is, is that I had to employ that lawyer again to get to keep that $64,000. You know, so and he fought for both me and Matt uh, um, to keep that sixty-four thousand dollars because it's like if it's ninety days within ninety days, you know, then the bankruptcy comes in and then they 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 have to look through everything, and so we had to argue uh, to keep that sixty-four thousand dollars and then the thirty-six thousand dollars. I think I got a ten-dollar check or eight-dollar check or something like that from the the bankruptcy. Now, by now. didn't they also have like a a car you were supposed to get out of that deal? I did get that. I did get that, but that wasn't okay. That was just part of the thing. I, I sold that. It was a little scion. 
a little Toyota Scion. Um, you know, and the guy got, and we got the hundred thousand dollars, the original hundred thousand dollars, but I'm still owed thirty six thousand dollars. So well, did, not to, I mean, I know I end up losing a split decision on that one, but uh, kind of a big difference between a about a two hundred fifty thousand dollar person and ten. It was, it still bothers me a little bit. Too. It's like a, you, you, you made less, you made less for your time, the guy than the guys that won their fight for third. It's I know. Like, uh, sat down that, the math. The guy who got seconds, the guy that got really screwed. Yeah. I know that man. That 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 I I that I don't wish that on anybody. They should never. That kind of pressure. I mean, I'm sure you felt it too. The pressure going into that last fight was unreal. Like you're thinking, if I win this, I get about two fifty in a title shot. If I lose, I get less than the guys who who lost first right. round and win this. You know what I mean? So it's just like, right. man, it was just a huge difference, and I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. That just didn't matter. Like at least myself and I and I know Matt, neither one of us fought well because we were just too worried about not losing. And it's I don't I, that's not a good way to do it, man. I don't that's messed up. No, I agree. It's like it's it's way too big of a difference. And it's like, you know, and then you know, it is what it is. It's like, but even you know, if I can fight for the title for twenty grand, you know, it's like that's that's some crazy oh, too. You stupid. Know? Yeah, I know. It, it, it's uh you know, uh, that, that was, that was a lot too, you know, it's like, and, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, neither here nor there. It's a lot better than a hundred dollars I received. The first <laughs> <time>. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's all kind of relative, but it's all perspective. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You know, it's like, and I, I was lucky in that, you know, it's like my gym was doing okay enough at that time. You know, it's like that, that, uh, I, I wasn't having to send home money. I know a lot of the guys on the show, it's like, you know, we're getting paid on the, by the week, you know, it's like, and, you know, I remember Shoney sending all of okay, this baby mama gets this, this baby mama gets this. I always bring that up. It's hilarious. He'd, he'd be like, Shoney, we got a problem. He'd go over there. Okay. He, here's what 500 goes, baby, <laughs> this baby's mama. 500 goes of this. Oh, it was hilarious, man. That happened every week too. It was, it was like clockwork. Every week, every <laughs> week. It's just like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, hey, just give me my check at the end. It's like, I, I felt really lucky, you know, that I could do that. You know, it's like, so, um, you know, life was still moving on, you know, so I don't know, you know, it's all relative. It's, 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 it's all good, but yeah, they still owe me $36,000 off. So, okay. So, hey, uh, let me, let, let me take it back to the Abu Dhabi there. Cause, let me hear your impressions. Uh, you you had a match with Comprito. You, you you got he, Comprito, another black belt that now lives in Minnesota and stuff, and another high level guy that I think you would probably know and respect. Chicago. What was that feeling like? Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like I felt like I won that match. You know, it's like if you watch it back, you know, I really think it took about ten minutes for them to decide who won. They said that. Uh, I had the minus one. I never pulled guard. He pulled guard. Uh, you know, I was chasing heel hooks uh, at the time, uh, you know, and I felt like I chased him all over the match. Uh, but that minus one, if you watch back, you know, that, that, that was him pulling guard. That wasn't me. Um, you know, I should have won on that technicality. Uh, and then I would have had Jeff Munson in the next match. And, and uh, um, you know, I, I thought I would have heel hooked him. He, he was very happy that, you know, I wasn't the one that he was going against, um, you know, but because of that match, it really did kind of change the way that I compete. You know, it's like, I, I, I stopped doing heel hooks. I don't do heel bars. I don't do heel hooks. Uh, I, I was just, I decided that, you know, like, listen, there's going to be some guys like him that just aren't going to tap. Uh, they're just going to let their, you know, shit break. And I, I, so I stopped you know, doing heel hooks. I, I concentrated on our bars and jokes, you know, it's like uh, from then on out, you know, it's like in position and not giving up position because you know, it's like when I go, I sit back for a heel hook, the guy, you know, it, it, we're changing positions, you know, and it's like, uh, yeah, so I, I really changed the way that I, I don't, even in the room, I don't, I don't do heel hooks. I just don't do them no more. It's like, I, I don't, it's, to this day, it's just, I made a rule uh, after that tournament that no more heel hooks, no more knee bars. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I just, that, that, that was kind of my rule, you know, going forward. So. Any, any stories from Abu, you, you're actually one of the rare guys that actually made the trip to Abu Dhabi. Any, anything you remember about the trip, any stories that were fun or anything like that before Mike yeah. takes over again? <sighs> You know, it's like, okay, so guys, when I moved to Texas in 1997, 
I'd never been on an airline before. You know, mm-hmm. I'd never, I'd never been, you know, I'd never flown anywhere. You know, so it's like uh, I flew to pick up a buddy's motorcycle in Houston. That was my first commercial airline trip. And then my next airline trip was when I flew to Brazil to compete. You know, <laughs> like, you know, it's like I'd never been to Mexico. I'd never been to Canada, anything like that. You know, so I had, you know, like going to Brazil was a huge, you know, cultural, you know, I, I was, you know, that was, that was big. Now, fast forward, and that's 1998. In 2099, 99, I'm going to Abu Dhabi you know, to a Muslim country, uh, you know, it's like the flight that they gave me, I, I think I had a 12 hour live over in uh, oh. uh, Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany, you know, so it's like, I don't have any money. It's like, I don't have, you know, I don't understand how to travel. I just, you know, it's like, <laughs> anything like that. So I'm just sitting in an airport where, you know, where nobody really speaks English and, <laughs> and we're hanging out until my flight's going to come around. You know, so yeah, it was it was a huge cultural, you know, uh, change for me because it's like there was, you know, it's like you go in there and you. This is my, I'm from South Dakota. We didn't have Muslims in South Dakota. We didn't have uh, lots of things in South Dakota. You know, so like you know, I've been around it, but going to a country with just Muslim, uh, you know, that that you know where they're praying five times a day and. Uh, you know, it's like you're woke up by the by the noise of the their prayers starting and um, stuff like that. It was a de- very very different experience. Uh, you know, I, I felt you know lucky to get to go, and, and, and I'm very grateful that 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 I got that experience. You know, because that helped shape who I am now. And I and because of that, I, I really love traveling. I, I it's like uh, I I still really like to this day travel. It's fun. Hey, who was your roommate? Ah, uh, can't remember his name. He was up in Minnesota. Uh, he 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 lost Mario his... Roberto. Uh, no, in Abu Dhabi though. No. America. He's American. He's American. Uh, From Minnesota. Can't remember his name. Dave he, Minet. He's, you know, he's an American wrestler. Not uh, Minet. He fought. Was he it... fought in the UFC. He was champ. He was yeah, champ in the UFC at Dave 185 Minet. pounds. Dave uh, Minet. Yeah, really, really early. Dave Manet. Dave Manet. Dave Manet. Dave. Hold on, we lost Trav. <laughs> Hello. He's at. Yep. Give him a second. His the internet will have to come back. We haven't <clears throat> lost him in the room yet. So. Cool. Oh, yeah. Miguel, ask before we transition. Ask uh, how he knew right away he wasn't getting paid. I mean, there had to have been some telltale signs. There. I know. <laughs> There's some, well, anger. I, I, There's some I'm, anger that we need know, to tap into. No, and I'm glad because, you know, some of this stuff is like, yeah, I remember that. You know, I'm pretty sure that the first year that they won the trials, each winner was given a $2,000 bonus. Hey, 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 hey Trav, we, we lost you. Hey, yes. um, so your roommate, your roommate was Dave Benet then? Yeah, Dave Manet. Okay, yeah. good, good. So well, anyway, Mike, Mike wanted to ask a question, and, and let's go over this. So I think by winning the first year's trials, the Texas trials, every winner got two thousand bucks when they when they got yeah. off the plane in Abu Dhabi. And, well, yeah, yeah. And I don't know how. Look, I, I'm in the middle here, and I, I appreciate that Travis says it's not my fault. At some point, you know, some of the blame I'll take, you know, because. But it's a big show. There's a lot of logistics. And I'm on both ends. I got fighters like him who are really, really need the money. And everybody's got a story. And then, you know, the sponsor guys always do get that feeling at some point of, like, everybody's got their hand out here. And uh, you can almost see both points, you know, especially over there where it was ostentatious. And, yeah, that, that was $10,000 for the qualifiers that – wasn't accounted for before and the money wasn't on hand and everything got fucked up, I guess. I, that's what I'm trying to remember the details, but yeah, that, that, that happened the second time. The, the other part of it is, is that. Matt got, Matt got paid. Matt got paid. He got the t-shirt, you know, and that was the difference is, is if you got a t-shirt, if you got a t-shirt to wear when you competed, you, you, so he had somebody that paid him, you know, I don't know who paid him, you know, whoever gave him the t-shirt, you know, Matt, Matt, Sarah got, he got, cause he was one of the other qualifier winners. Um, and, and he won it, uh, um, 
you know, you see, he, 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 get, he got paid. They liked him. They, they, uh, you know, it's like, and, and they consider it betting on a horse, I think is, is you know, or yeah. Just, well, I, I think it helps to have, Helps to have Henzo in your corner or two. I think they loved Henzo, so I'm sure that's probably why he got paid. That that, that sure. it wasn't wasn't my doing. So the, no, yeah. I think I didn't blame you. Michael. You know, it's like I, didn't no, blame I, I appreciate that. Hey, you know, I, I do blame Dana White. He owes me thirty six thousand dollars. The thing about He's the one who said it. He said it on that uh, on TV. It's like I was there. Go back and watch it. There, I was there. there. Listen, yeah. So you know, so, so I do it, blame him, Mike. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you, obviously you took a few years off of mixed martial arts fighting, but then Chris, as you had asked initially, you wind up in hook and shoot against AMC Pancration's Chris Munson. Yeah. So what makes you finally say the hundred dollar paydays are worth fighting again? Miguel paid me. Miguel paid me two thousand dollars. <laughs> it's like two thousand dollars, you know. So I, I went up and I did that did that fight. You know, it's like it, that was way more than anybody else was willing to pay me. And uh, you know, it's like as I just didn't want to fight for nothing. You know, it's like it's just uh, you know it's it's you know like I said, you know these promoters and stuff like that. A lot of them weren't honest, and I felt like Miguel was honest, and he paid me and. And it was good, you know, so it was, it was fine. So, so at this point, are you thinking, I want to try and make a run to get to the UFC. I got to have a few fights. And so are you even thinking like that? Travis, did we lose you? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're going in and out. You said that uh, you think I'm. Uh, no, 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 run. no. No, I said at that point, are you thinking, man, I want to try and get to the UFC? Or are we not even think like that? We just think, hey, this guy will pay me a couple thousand dollars for a fight. Are we really actually thinking I'm going to try and get to the UFC? I was, I always had this opinion that I, that I thought I was really good. And I wanted to see if I was as good as I thought I was. And, <laughs> and so it was like, you know, it's like I just wanted to fight, you know, the best guys and stuff like that and, uh, um, and see if I was as good as, you know, is what I thought, you know, and so, so it's like when I got the call to fight, you know, um, at UFC 50, I was, I was very, very excited. You know, that, that was, that was a cool experience. Very fun. When you were announced, you were announced as coming from fighting out of next generation. That was the name of my gym at the time. Uh, okay. uh, uh Chris Brennan, he's, he had a, a next generation and I was like, you know, okay, this. I, you know, it's like, I don't want to have the same name as somebody else's gym. He was in California at the time. So I just changed my name to my name, uh, Travis Luter's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So changed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I hear Texas, obviously he's in California, but you hear that name and immediately you think Chris Brennan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, it's, when I started it, I don't even know who started it first. You know, it's like, <laughs> it was around the same time. It's like I put Next Generation. I thought it was a cool name. Uh, um, I'm very happy that I use my name now as I think it's way easier. Uh, you know, it's like everybody knows who I am. So, or, you know, <laughs> not everybody knows who I am, but it's like, if once you figure it out, it makes it easier. So, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And a few months later, you fight in uh, Miguel match yeah. or uh, you fight a uh, Jorge Rivera, Miguel match made. Yeah. So wait, yeah. let me, let me go through this here. This so, is fantastic. Okay, the, the bottom line here is, is I've seen Travis already, and I know he's talented. At some point, I think he probably communicated to me that he's not going to do this for 100 bucks or 500 bucks. No. So, his first fight, Chris Munson. Munson's no joke. This guy was a Matt Hume student, and I believe at that time he had he my Dave belt. And he, in, in rings, in Monty's show. And in my fight, the week, the fight before, he fought Kakareko uh, from Brazil, like the guy who finished second in the, in the Abu Dhabi Absolutes and stuff like that, like in the, in the title fight, and he beat him. And so Travis came in, and in a rare situation, but I knew he had level, so he got a title shot his first fight, and he was paid, you know, the money made sense for a title shot for me, and it made sense for him at that point. So that's why he walked into a title shot, and, you know, he made sure to work on Chris, which in very impressive fashion. And I remember once again, he comes up to me afterwards, holding the belt, and he goes, 
Yeah, you didn't think I could do it. <laughs> he was always, he always he always had that that like he wanted to prove himself kind of thing. And hey, taking a title shot in your first in your first fight against an experienced guy, a Hume student, that's some confidence, you know. So that, that that's one of the most impressive. He's not a guy who talks much in interviews and stuff like that, but his athletic confidence when he was talking to me as a promoter always came across. Well, thank you, Miguel. That's nice of you to say. So then yeah. he fights uh, Jorge next. Is that what Jorge's I'm saying? Jorge's tough. Future UFC veteran, uh, Jorge Rivera in Jorge, in Jorge Rivera's hometown. Miguel is the Ooh. matchmaker. You know, uh, that one, Jorge didn't show up to Wayans. Miguel. Yeah. He didn't show up. I didn't wait for Miguel. I didn't wait for him to show up either. Uh, um, and nobody watched him weigh in. And he told me what he weighed a few years later. Uh, he didn't make sure. weight. He remembers wrong. Maybe he remembers wrong, but I don't. And I didn't even say anything to him when he said it. Uh, but he said 205. I made 195. Uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, that. And it was, it was a collaboration in between two different shows. And none of our guys, Miguel guys, were there when the weigh-ins happened for Jorge. He showed up late. And uh, I'm not saying that that's the difference in the fight, uh, you know, but it's like, uh, you know, we had our rematch on the first day of the Ultimate Fighter. So <laughs> it was good. So what yeah. How'd the fight go down? How, did, how exactly did it happen? Um, you know, he ended up TKOing me. Uh, I, I was... I took him down a bunch and I just never could quite get the submission. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in a couple good positions where I came close and Jorge's tough and uh, tough. stuff like that. Um, he ended up, you know, I got stopped in the third, um, you know, Dana White and Chuck Liddell were in the crowd and, and they, they both came up to me afterwards and told me it was a good fight you know, while I was in the ring and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was a good fight, you know, hats off to Jorge. He won that day. Um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, and like I said, you know, for me, the rematch was first day at Alpha Fighter. So, what, what, tell me about that. Cause I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't want to hear about, about that too. That was just, we had a sparring session, uh, you know, that was pretty rough. And, and Jorge got really upset because I would submit him only right before the belt. So it's like, you know, it's like, and I kept doing this over and over and over again, where it's like, you know, we're doing five minute rounds and I would take him down and do my thing for four minutes and 50 seconds and then I'd sub it. And, and it's like, and, you know, and it's like, and he got, he got upset about it because it's like, it was just, you know, it's like, um, yeah, so he was, he just didn't like it very much. You were know, you just like, proving he, a point by doing that? I was just, you know, it's like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just... well, I mean, the fact, the fact is, is you, you, you're obviously better by, at, at the time of Ultimate Fighter than you were back in Massachusetts, improving. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I was improving. I was getting better. It's like I, 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 my stand-up was better. It's like, um, you know, it's, but at, at the end of the day, it was just, you know, it's like, you know, it, there's, there's always a small difference in between fight day and training. You know, it's like. For um, sure. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, and, you know, I'm sure he's better on fight day. And it's like, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it was just for me mentally, you know, it's like uh, going out there and getting that W, you know, it's like, it, it's, you know, Jorge's a really good fighter. You know, it's like Jorge's somebody that, you know, it's like, you know, this, you know, he fought Anderson, he fought Lee Murray, he fought, you know, it's like he's fought a lot of guys and he did really, really well. He's a great fighter. Uh, you know, it's like, and if, you know, I, I don't blame him for anything. You know, he, he, I like Jorge a lot. He was a good guy. Man, I really liked him on the show. He's one of my favorites. But um, I do remember everybody just talking about, and this makes more sense, just uh, your level of ground was just on a different level than everybody there. And I remember thinking, man, I wanted to go work out with you guys at some point, but it just, you know, there were different teams and I don't know, never really happened, but. I guess I wouldn't have been able to anyway. You had a torn pack, so. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like I, I would, you know, it's like, you know, so it's like I, I, I 
trained, I think three days before Drago and it was, it was painful, but it was like, you know, uh, you know, but yeah, there's two and a half weeks that I didn't get to train, um, you know, and they were going to doctors and stuff like that, trying to figure out what, what I could do. There was nothing that they could do for me. So. I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, remember, there was a lot of people who had staph infection, a lot of, I mean, there was hard, there was a lot yeah. of time, downtime. I was one of the few people who got to, me and train all the time. I think me and Matt Sarah, like, so we trained together all the time. There wasn't many people who came out uninjured in that show or without some kind of disease that, or something. That, that staff, I've never saw staff like that one. That, those guys, no. that, that, that was, I've never saw since before or after. You know, it's like I've had a lot of times and I've never saw it like that. That was weird. They got yeah. so sick. And it was were they just not cleaning the mats? They I said they were all the time. I don't know. Who knows? You know, it's like, I, I don't know. It, it was really strange type of staff because like usually staff's like a boil. You know, it's just one spot. This was their whole fucking body. And they yeah. were both sick. And it was just, it was really strange, man. Hey, can, can, let me take us back to Massachusetts so that Mike doesn't have a canary here. Oh, yeah. no, this is great. This is the second fighter Miguel did this to. So go ahead, yeah. Miguel. So here's the deal. He comes out, his MMA debut, he's in a title fight, he wins impressively, he's the champion. But we still don't know a lot about a guy with two minutes in the ring, right? Yeah. So, so now with George Rivera, he's defending his belt. But, you know, maybe he could use a little more experience. It depends how it goes. Anyway, my, the, the thing I want to relay is Travis did have positions, round one, round two, trying to finish. He gave it his all. He crawled to his corner from between to, to go before the from round two to round three. And, and my, one of the guys in, uh, around the ring goes, he ain't coming out for round three. He ain't coming out for round three. And this fucker came out for round three. So even then, just in early in his fights and stuff like that, I think you see maybe he was a champion early in his career, but the point is, is you see he had a diamond in the rough. You, you don't teach that kind of, you know, even 2,000 bucks isn't enough to, you know, crawl, around, you know, like that. So, <laughs> Did you do a cardio crazy. wall? What's that? Was it a cardio wall? Uh, I don't know. You know, I just, you know, I... Uh... You know, it's a fight. You know, it's like a might get hit. I don't. You know, it's a long time ago. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't think people realize how five minute rounds are tough, and it, it takes a while to build up and get used to that. Especially when you're going for submissions. I've had. I remember one of my fights. I went for a bunch of submissions, and after the second round, I was done. I mean, my arms were done. I couldn't do anything. And that's why I learned you can't go all out for these subs if you. If you get it, you have to go for it all the way. But if you're trying to force it, man, you waste your arms and your juice you're done i mean i've had the third round where i can't move and that's the worst feeling in the world and i get it man people don't understand that it seems like it's only 15 minutes my god that's the longest 15 minutes of your life you know okay uh in the 100 meter dash in the 100 meter dash uh you only spend two or three steps at top speed you yeah. know it's like the world class like a world class sprinter only has two or three steps because it takes almost half the distance to get up to top speed. I forget how many steps it is before they hit top speed. And then they're at top speed for a couple steps. And then the human body starts to give out. You cannot maintain that. And they're slowing down from that point until they cross the finish line. Okay, they are not speeding up and getting faster as the race goes on. <laughs> 100 meters. This lasts less than 10 seconds. This is when you are going all out. Oh, it's like, I'm going to go all out for a minute. No, nobody can you know, it's like, it, it's like the human body isn't designed that way. You know, we're, the humans are the greatest endurance athletes uh, of the world. You know, it's like you put a horse against uh, a human and the human, uh, you know, in, a, in like in a marathon setting and the human is faster, it's substantially faster than, than a horse over the course of uh, 26 miles. Uh, you know, and the horse, you know, if, if you're not, don't have vets watching them and stuff like that, they will die. Uh, you know, the human, you know, you know, you think about like in Africa, you know, like this is the first forms of uh, hunting is, is just simply just running an animal to death until they just lay down and then you walk up and you stab it and, and you eat it. And so it's like, you know, humans are really, really good endurance athletes at 80%. You know, but when you start doing a hundred, you just can't keep it up for very long. And in fact, it's less than 10 seconds. So mm. that's amazing. 
Uh, where, where'd Mike go? Mike, you still here? That, that's okay. So anyway, so now you have the hook and shoot uh, loss. What, how do you take that in? Because you, you haven't lost in, in competition. You're taking a step up to Abu Dhabi now in MMA and stuff like that. How do you, you know, how does the first loss sit with you? I, I can tell not good. <laughs> You know, I, I never dealt with losses very well. It's like, I just always really, really struggled. You know, it's like, uh, you know, felt like I should have won. I felt like, you know, I, I always feel like, you know, I just felt like I was, you know, he, he, you know, George is really good. I really like him. He's a good human. I, I felt like I was better. Um, he won that day. Good for him. Uh, it's, uh, you know, but it was just off. Go back to training, you know, back to training, back to, back to doing what we do. And it's like, and, uh, you know, try again the next time. I forget which year it was that I met you, Chris. Uh, we let, we met at, uh, um, we fought on the same show in London. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I don't remember what year it was, but yeah, that was at that uh, Cage Ray, what was it called? I can't Cage remember. Cage Cage. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a good time, man. That was before the uh, Ultimate Fighter, so it's, it has to be two thousand five, two thousand. It was July twelfth, two thousand five. Okay, cool. Well, Mike knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that was the. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that, that, that was good. You know, I remember watching you fight that night. You know, it's like I thought you were going to go out there and bang, and you took that guy down and made quick order of him. Uh, um, he was a big, strong guy. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 didn't fuck you didn't fuck around with him at all. You just took him down and. Well, the thing I knew about him from watching him was he was very good at stand up and banging, but you know, I thought his ground was not as good. And, you know, so you know, I figured in certain times in my career, I was like, you know, I, I like to stand like to bang, but at that point you're always, you know, I was already, you know how when you fought in the UFC, you could always fight outside the UFC. So you're always waiting on the call for him. So you don't want to get all banged up and not be able to right. take the call. I was just like, man, you got to get through these other ones. You're just doing them for what it is. And I'm not going to go out there and try and break my hand or, you know, wreck myself. I was going to try and get that win against so you. Plus you lose those. They're not bringing you back. You know, you have to win those fights. Yeah. You got to win those fights. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah Cage race was a fun, fun, fun place to fight though. You know, it's like yeah. a good fight there. That was fun. <laughs> So Travis, you know, speaking of Cage Rage, I, I, I guess alumni, uh, December 6, 2003, European Valley 2 -0, you fought Mark Epstein yeah. from the famed London Shoot Fighters gym. Yeah. Was Lee Murray in his corner? No, no. Uh, he was tight. Last, last minute. You know, it's like I never got to meet Lee Murray. Uh, I guess he's still alive, right, guys? Yeah. He's in Morocco. Prison, <laughs> Prison still. Yeah. In Morocco, Is yeah, it Morocco? yeah. Uh, no, uh, no. Mark, Mark showed up, and man, he was he was such a thug. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I I could say that he was a really nice guy. No, he was a huge thug. You know, it's like he's just across. He got in a fight after the fights. You know, they they the uh, the promoter was really really upset with him. You know, because he got he beat up some Denmark civilian. You know, which is bad press for the. Oh. For the their show and yeah it's like uh yeah he, he he was definitely a thug you know it's like uh you know he's tough though you know, tough guy. how'd the fight go uh i i took him down in the first round beat him up a little bit i took him down again in the second round and subbed him um it was you know he's like he was you know uh i hit him with the double leg uh both times um and he his, you know he was really really strong uh, you know, he could throw down with his hands and stuff like that, but on the ground, he wasn't very good. So. But, you know, this this is still early, I believe. You know, when we're talking the guys from Europe. Well, I should say England. They had a big hole in their wrestling game. You know, they had good yeah. stand up. So I think we exploited that as much as possible. Like, why make this a 50 50 fight when I can make it a 90 10 fight? Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to go out there and, and throw, throw, you know, and, and risk getting caught, getting beat up, you know, stuff like that. If I can, I can just go out there and take you down and put you on your back. And, you know, did Guy Metzger, did Guy Metzger yeah. line this up for you? Yeah, Guy, Guy Metzger, yeah, he, he lined up both, both those fights. Uh, yeah, and it's like, a, and the one time, the first time we went over, he fought. And then the second time he, he did a seminar, you know, I should say we, we did a seminar. It was his <laughs> seminar, I helped him. 
uh, and uh, you know, but he came and cornered me both times and stuff like that. So cool. So with Epstein, he has actually got a huge reputation of being like Lee Murray's right hand man. Yeah. Like everybody talks about him and Lee were like this. Yeah. And when Lee went down, that entire European community was shocked that that Epstein wasn't involved. <laughs> yeah, you know, who knows? Maybe he was. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, who knows if he was or wasn't? You know, it's like, I mean, that's that 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 bank heist, you know, it's like they need to make a movie out of that at some oh, point. I can't believe they have it yet, man. Like, well, like 100 million euros or something or pounds or whatever. Jeez. I mean, it's 80, I don't know, $80 million, I think, is is what I heard. I, I don't know. You know, it's, like, it is, it's a stupid amount of money and, uh, you know, it's the biggest bank heist ever. It's like they've made lots of bank heist movies. Why don't you make Exactly. Something? Why not with this one? They, it's got to be coming at some point. So they say that he's uh, fathered a few children since being locked up yeah and uh all right so there, there's there's a couple travis i'm really glad you brought this up there, there's a few things that they absolutely need to make movies about lee murray yeah for, for sure. sure for sure the holland dutch mma scene of the 90s when promoters were getting shot in the back of like gyms and their cars blown up that absolutely has to take place yeah and uh I think that, that legendary IFC 205 pound tournament where, you know, nobody was there. They had to pump like noise into the audience. They didn't even turn the heat on, um, you know, with Chael Sonnen and who, who won it? Uh, Babalu, I think, beat Jeremy Horn in the finals. That, that's another really good opportunity to make a movie. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So you get Epstein, you get Mark Epstein, you beat him. Lee Murray, not in this corner. Uh <laughs> few months later april 4 2004 european belly Tudo number two you beat a guy that's got a win over Ant Antony hardock and that's uh gregor's Chukabowski, who again is no joke like you're going to europe and fighting their top tier people you yeah. haven't had an easy fight no i didn't have very many easy fights you know it's like and that's okay you know it's like i uh, I, I got you know I, I wanted to fight, you know, really, really good people. And it's like, I remember my, on that first show that I thought I should have been fighting Anthony Macias. You know, it's like, I'd never fought anybody. And I was like, well, he's headline on the show. Why am I not fighting him? You know, it's like, this is, I guess I was just that stupid, you know? So it's like, uh, uh, that was just, you know, that was always my attitude. I just wanted to fight. So. Jakubowski hey, actually uh, has a loss to California Commissioner Andy Foster on the on the Bulldog yeah. show. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, he was six one and two, and I, I've seen a couple of his fights. He was legitimately very tough. Yeah, fun. Squad, the, the Polish guys too. They they usually come to go out on their shield. You know what I mean? Yeah, the the that was that was interesting. It's like you know he he spoke zero zero English, and we didn't have a translator. You know, I have no idea what he's, you know, it's like, you know, he was nice. We shake hands, you know, it's like, there was nobody telling me what he said. Nobody's telling him what I said, you know, there was, <laughs> okay. You know, shake hands, hit each other. <laughs> it's like, that's it. So different. he's probably talking trash the whole time. I'm going to yeah. destroy you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dumb American. <laughs> Dumb American yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> You actually get a last minute replacement call after that for UFC 50 yeah. against Marvin Eastman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, they, how far out of the event do they call you? Uh, six days. Six days. Oh, yeah. Wow. You didn't even make weight. Uh, well, it was the 205 pounds. I, I was supposed to fight the following weekend or like the, so I was like two weeks away from fighting at 185 <laughs> in, in California. And I had to pull out of that event to do this event. Uh, and that guy works for the UFC now, uh, and, and and they they made it real clear that I had to pay him back for my plane ticket. So it's like oh. so it's like I had to write him a check, or I was not going to be in the UFC any. I wouldn't. The UFC was going to bring me back. So I had to write him an eight hundred dollar check, so so that I could continue on to fight in the UFC. 
you know. Wow. It's like, and, Who was this too? Yeah, yeah, it was really nice of them. You know, it's like I had to have me pay for my own goddamn plane ticket that I didn't get to use. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, you guys called me, asked me to fight, and then they explained to me that I had to play for the plane ticket. So, okay. Don't yeah, think. usually, usually a promoter, if they want you, they'll get you out of that. You know, and that's on them. But this was a different era, I guess. So. No. That was that was a different time, and it's like you know that's UFC fifty, and you know, but it, it was it came from you know I don't know you know how it worked. I all I know is I had to write a check and send it to send it to him, and he still works for the UFC. I, I saw him not that long ago. Um, um, I saw Do you him care to give a name? Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Okay, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. So you know, and, and you, you're dealing with the UFC now with uh, Kevin Holland, obviously. You, yeah. You're still going yeah, to the UFCs with Kevin. Kevin you know, he's out there in Vegas this week. You know, he fights. Uh, he, he's fighting Cowboy Oliveira uh, on Saturday. Um, oh, yeah. So should be good. Are, are you two still working yeah, together? So. Should be fun. He, you know, he's training at my gym, but he, he decided not to use me in his corner this time. He does that sometimes. You know, it's like uh, Kevin's really, really difficult to coach. He doesn't want to be coached. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he, he just, you know, it's like he right now he just wants to come to my jujitsu class. I train with him. If he asks me to do something else, I'll do it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he, he, um, he was wrestling for one fight. He was trained with Johnny Hendricks uh, for wrestling. They, they, they were coming over. And then uh, I don't know what happened there, you know, on why he's not working with Johnny anymore. And then he was working with a guy out of Houston. Uh, but he's, he goes to my wrestling classes. Uh, uh, but he doesn't want me to, like, do, like, training for him. Like, like, you know, it's like when I would fight, you know, it's like I would set up my wrestling you know, where I've got new guys coming in on me all the time and stuff like that. And, and it's like, you know, Kevin explained to me, listen, I like your jujitsu. I don't, I don't want you to teach me in wrestling anymore. You know, okay. But he'll come to my class, but he just doesn't want me to coach coach. So, okay. Sounds good. You taught him about talk, trash talking in the ring. I could tell that that was you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was me. I caught him. So Marvin Eastman, you get a highlight real knockout um, in the second round, um, kind of an uneventful first round, and but you ended the fight with uh, quite an exclamation point. Yeah, Marvin was strong. You know, it's like oh. it was really, really hard. You know, it's like, and I felt like, you know, uh, I felt very uh, fortunate to get that knockout. You know, he, he was a tough guy. You know, it's like, yeah, um, you know, two hundred five pounds. You know, he he was. He was hesitant to engage, you know, I, I shot, I don't know how many times on the first round, you know, but I was, you know, taking my time for sure, you know, to say the least, you know, it's like trying not to get, you know, he hit hard, you know, it's like, he was a scary guy. So. And you're up a weight class. I mean, I said you had not made weight, you know, I should clarify that statement. You weighed in at 201 pounds. Yes. So yes. there was no cut. Like you no, just no, it's like no, it's like I, I could have weighed in my clothes that day. You know, it's like I was like I said, I was cutting for I, I was training for a fight at 185 pounds uh in California and, and yeah uh, that, that one came up and I got set. So yeah, so uh Patrick Cote pulled out. He was the reason that you got your uh no Patrick Cote got moved up. He got moved up, he fought Tito. The fight Tito. Yeah, yeah. Guy Metzger, Guy Metzger had a stroke uh um in training so his guy was training training for the fight and uh he went to california to train for this one he wasn't training in Dallas, and they said that he woke up and he wasn't right and they ended up taking him to the hospital when he had had a stroke um, wow and so it's like you know uh you know and guys you know he doesn't have any you know his face is fine and he, he's he's doing well and stuff like that but it's like but yeah no, a guy never fought again you know it's like that was that was the end, end of the uh, fighting for him he was supposed to rematch tito and patrick moved up fought fought tito lost uh, i think a decision i think the decision all, yeah, yeah he did well yeah he did you know he, he, he dropped him in the first couple seconds of the fight actually made tito right, the there. first punch first punch tito yeah. went to a knee and then mold him the rest of the fight but yeah i mean you know tito big human 
you know, yeah. 205 yeah. pounds, you know, it's like, he's a really big guy for 205 pounds. And, uh, yeah. you know, he, even today, it's like, I mean, he'd be big, you know, it's like, he's as big as John Jones, you know, it's like, uh, you know, John Jones is just a whole other animal. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. As a thank you for taking a last minute fight with Mar, you know, with Marvin Eastman, the UFC does you a huge solid and they put you up against Matt Lindland. Yeah. And you'll you know, see 52. You know, Joe, Joe Silva, I don't know why he didn't, you know, that, that's, you know, I didn't think that that fight made a lot of sense. You two, no. two wrestlers. Uh, it's like, you know, I, you know, but back then they weren't really building you. You know, it's like it wasn't it wasn't about building. It was more about, OK, let's just let these guys fight. And it's like and, uh, it, it, there was, you know, they, but they only had what, five or six, what, four or five shows a year. I don't know. It wasn't that many shows. It's like, uh-uh. uh, uh, you know, so it's like you, you didn't have as many chances. You know, it's like, uh, um, yeah, I got I got Linlin. I, I uh ended up getting caught in the goddamn guillotine all things you know it's like um i took him down in the first round he took me down in the first round uh you know matt's tough you know he, he it was a weird fight you know it's like a uh, stupid guillotine i hate them so, so uh <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of surprised at that. But what's even more surprising is this is like the beginning days of Joe Rogan doing yeah. the post-fight interviews. Right. And Matt takes the microphone from, from Joe and walks away while talking on the mic. And Rogan's like, oh, no. Like, he's not getting He back. gave up the mic. You never he gave, dude, up the gave up the mic. Dude, gave up the 101. No, nah, fumbled the Come mic. On. Matt, and you know, Matt is so friggin' smart. Like he's been in too many locker rooms for opportunities like this for him not to take advantage of it. He literally turned his back to Rogan, like, get out of here, kid. I got your mic. <laughs> Come get it. Matt, that's a gangster move. Yeah. Matt's a different guy. You know, that that that's Matt is a different animal. You know, it's like the wrestler in him and stuff like that. You know, you know, Matt was really, really good for a long time. You know, it's like he's he's one of the best guys. You know, at 185 pounds, you know, it's like he, he, he's he's Matt's really good. You know, he's a good fighter. Yeah, no, for sure. I stuck for him sure. in with Fedor. But that, I yeah. stuck him in with Fedor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Henderson beat him. You know, it's like, yeah. I mean, think about that. You know, it's like, that's another 185 pounder, you know, that beat him. You know? uh, and granted, that's not prime time, you know, but, it's, but it's still – still dad that's still fighting you know it's like i I think his retirement fight's coming up right you know it's like i mean how many years later it's like but he went on what a 20 20 plus fight 24 fight streak uh uh, um i mean and pride is pride you know it's like i I don't know you know it's like um he beat mcgarra twice beat crow cop i mean you know that I mean, Crow Cup fight, the Crow Cup fight was one of the most interesting fights because it's like he was backing him up the whole goddamn fight. You know, it's like, and he was, if anything, he, I thought he was faster than Crow Cup. You know, it's like, it's, you know, it's like when uh, Randleman threw him on his head, killed him, and then he was reborn in that moment. He got submitted up. a few seconds later. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I mean, I, I, I was like, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> he submitted him, and then he Only won. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it was just, I guess, his ECU reset went into kill mode. Yeah, my, my, not to talk too much about Fedor, but my favorite Fedor fight is against Hongman, the giant Korean oh, wrestler. That's yeah. because, three again. I mean, you can't, there's no way to practice for a guy, you know, double your no. weight. 450 no. pounds, you know, these, du- right. and, and the arm bar looks ridiculous because he literally looks tiny, like this big, oh, right. you know, in the arm bar stuff, it's amazing, and, and People now don't even have to prepare for a fight like that. So no, yeah, it's it's like, zero. Well, okay, Nogueira versus Bob Sapp. Yeah, you know, exactly. like oh my god, phenomenal fight. You know, you know, it's like he disappears on the screen. How many times will you just see Bob Sapp's Bob Sapp's ass? You know, it's like you don't even see Nogueira. You might see little limbs, you know, pointing point out. <laughs> with his feet. You know, it's like, and then he ends up subbing him with an armbar. Um, you know that's a, that's a crazy crazy isn't that's how that went went right mm-hmm. it's, um you know that's a crazy fight uh, you no know, you we don't get to see anything like that anymore that's probably a good thing Somebody, and that's know. when bob sam still cared 
Like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's prime time Bob Sapp. That, that's if, if, Bob Sapp. if Bob Sapp had like a Muhammad Ali type trainer who he respected, listened to, wasn't afraid to say, "Never mind, I'm doing this on my own." Bob yeah. Sapp may have been one of the most amazing fighters ever coming out of the Japan circuit. Well, think about him versus uh, in in when it was K one, they fought K one uh, against Ernesto mm-hmm. Hoos. And that's the who's yeah, knocked him that's out. Who's. That's craziness. You know, it's like him stopping the who's who's just one of the best of all time. And it's like and he's and he stopped him. That was crazy. You know, he was training with for Noguera and who's was my my boy Matt Hume. But was he, he didn't stay there. Yeah. And you know, then he <laughs> Matt Hume told me he goes, Bob Sapp had a great six months. That's what he said. <laughs> 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 Okay, but uh, I mean, it's like, you know, Mark Kerr, you know, it's like once the wheels fell off, you know, the wheels really fell off. And same thing with Bob Sapp, you know, it's like these guys that really, really could fight, but then they just don't care. And it's like, you know, they can, I don't know what happens. One one could argue that the wheels continue to fall off Mark Kerr. His movie with The Rock that was supposed to portray him was canceled. Was it really? Yeah, I I, I can tell. Was it canceled? Really? Yes, yes. And I'm going to tell you, I cannot reveal my source, but what I will tell you is that the person said when the documentary was done, the Smash Mission documentary was done, they used some Rico Rodriguez footage like as parts of the extra footage. Right. Rico sued them, put some sort of, I don't know, demand on it. I, I don't know. That's legal jargon. I'm not like capable of, of describing. And now that The Rock got involved, he also put like contacted legal and from what i understand his attorneys couldn't uh mediate properly what his cut should be or they had to pay him back from what they should have given him i don't know what it was but it's got rico rodriguez's name written all over it so i have been told by somebody incredibly close to mark kerr <laughs> you see that i can see that somebody that talks to mark kerr on a very regular basis told me that that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's crazy. So, that, it's a shame. I, I heard that, that movie was going to take place, and then I never heard anything else afterwards. So that's, that yeah. makes sense. That's too bad. Got a good um, promo out of it. What yeah. about uh, is your man? Like, like, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to comment. I think like The Rock is actually like older than Kerr. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how that's going to look, but go ahead, Mike. All right. So we kind of have a running theme here. Had, when was the last time you watched a Cage Rage event? Oh man, probably the last time I was there. Was the okay, was Cage Rage. You know, <laughs> you've got to watch them now, and I would really? suggest doing it sober because if you're under any type of drug, you will you will think like you're in some sort of weird matrix. The people that used to like kind of commentate in between the fights right. are so they're so wired. Like, it's like, they can't even keep their jaw together. Um, I, I think the guy O'Donnell is his last name, yeah. who's probably booked this fight. Matt Ewen is your is your bout cage rage 12. Chris, obviously you fought yeah. on that, that card yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah was- Range fighting, the hardest, trains with Mark Weir. How was your experience out there? You know, it was great. Uh, for that one, I went down and watched Wimbledon. Yeah, uh, it's like... Uh, um, I, I went for a day and took the tube and went down and watched uh, Wimbledon for the afternoon. Uh, um, so it was great. I, I was I was super excited to get to watch uh, uh, Wimbledon. I'm kind of a uh, closet uh, tennis fan, and uh, you know it's it, it was it was super fun to be there. Um, you know, and I always liked London. You know, it's like I, I, I when Chris fought, he stayed. He was smart enough that he stayed for a few days afterwards. I always flew home right away uh, afterwards. You know, it's like I, I always felt broke and stupid. So uh, <laughs> I should have uh, you know hung out. You know, I've gotten to be there enough times that I that I always had a really really good time. But I wish I would have spent more time there. Is what I'm trying to say. So I remember. Afterwards, you know, I stayed an extra day or two. I can't remember. Did the Jack the Ripper walking tour and all that. It was kind of fun. But I remember they gave you like this big trophy with like a big cup at the end of chalice. And uh, going out both nights, I remember 
that was my cup. I'd take that big <laughs> chalice and I'd <laughs> fill whatever drink and I was drinking out of that. It was a lot of fun riding on the double decker buses. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun though out there. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a different experience. You know, it was like, uh, it's, it's really hard to explain. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, going to pride, you know, go, going to corner and people at pride. Uh, I, I never got to fight in pride, uh, but, you know, but I cornered guy three times uh, there, you know, what a different experience. You know, it's like, I mean, it's just way different than going to the UFC. It's like, it's just, everybody's so quiet and respectful. Yeah. And, and then he, like before and after the fights, you know, it, it was just really, really a different experience. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain to fighters now, you know, it's like, I mean, fighting during corn, you know, cornering during quarantine, you know, it's like with being locked down the whole time, yeah. Vegas not being Vegas, uh, you know, it, it, it was really, really strange. Uh, yeah, it, not the same. It's just not the same. You know, it's like, Did you guys, like, would you guys go out to Rapungi at any times afterwards in Japan? Yeah, I went to Rapungi. Yeah, that was, that was, that was fun. You know, we had a good time. It's like the, yeah. the, so the guy that ran that owned the King of Pancras, and Guy Metzger were friends. And so yeah. it's like, I have a really strange diet where I just don't eat very many things. I eat like a six-year-old kid. Um, <laughs> Dessert they first? Never, they never evolved. And so it's like, you know, and Guy knew this. And it's like, you know, listen, you know, he's good. This, this, the guy that owned the uh, King of Pancras, you know, goes, he's going to take us to dinner, but you have to eat. You know, and it's like, and it's like, you know, this is before cell phones and stuff like that. Yeah stay in my hotel room where I could go eat and yes. so I chose to go eat. And it was like, it's the only time in my life that I've ever had like a seven course meal. And it's like, and this is Japanese food, seven course meal. And it's like, and I'm sitting right across the table and it's like, you know, he, this guy brings his whole family. I mean, there's, there's 30 people at, at, at the table and it's this guy's own personal restaurant. You know, he's just a really, really rich individual and you know and i got seated right across the table and he's asking me if it's good oh yeah yeah it's good no it's not good. it was, it was uh, i remember I, I just didn't do a dinner like that once i remember with those same people they you know because i fought for pain a lot and they brought me there and i remember that they, they they brought me this it was like this little mound of brown stuff with a raw egg on top and i'm like it was like and i they I, everybody mixed it up and i was like all right nice starting i said what is this and they're like mm. Uh, fresh hamburger. I'm like, raw hamburger? It was raw. It was fr- I was like, why would we cook it? I, I couldn't figure out what was going on, but I was like, ah, it was horrible, man. It's like, yeah, there's a, a grill right here. Can't we cook it? No, this is how you eat it. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Terrible. I got, a, I got a similar Japanese experience. Everyone knows sashimi, raw fish. Yeah. Ah. Ba sashimi is raw horse. Oh, just so, so, so you can make a mental note for the next time you're in Japan. They may slip you some raw horse. It looks like carpaccio, like the like the Italian ham. Yeah, but I was like, what? I was like, I can't hear ba sashimi. Ba. I was like, what's ba mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's going on? What's ba? Anyway, it might take over. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, and, well, yeah. The worst part is the meal ends, and then they, you know, it's like I'm like, oh, I survived. Then they're like dessert. Like, no, no, you know, so then they bring out their desserts. This is not dessert. This isn't pleasure. This is, this is, this was, you know, torture. Yeah, different culture, different time, but it's like, it was hard. What I always found help during that was have a, a, a nice bottle of acai right there, beer. Just every time I take a bite of that yeah. food, just, you know, drown exactly. it with that beer taste. It was nice. Yep, that's what I, I got did. pretty drunk too. <laughs> well, another thing too, we always talk, you know, most of the time, if you're corner, it's it's cool. You can go out and have fun. But usually, you go to a fight. You, it, it, it even if you're out of town in a great place, you're not having fun. You're cutting weight. You're not doing yeah. anything. And then the night after, you leave. You know, so yeah. people don't understand. I think it's fun. You get to go all these places. Maybe you have about an eight hour window after the fight's over till your plane leaves. So, not a lot of downtime. That's why every time after Japan, we'd go out for a pongi, stay out all night, go back to the hotel, and go straight to the airport so you can sleep all the way home. But not a lot of it's not fun and games all the time you get like one oh. eight hour period that's it yeah it's like you know that when i would try to land and then i the next day i'd try to go do something you know in between training and you know and that that was the only day that you really got to see the city 
yeah. uh, you know, it's like, unless you got to stay longer and I just, you know, always felt broke and didn't feel like I, you know, wanted to spend, you know, it's like when you're only getting paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. you know, you go spend a couple thousand dollars to be there. It's like, I just never did that. You know, it's like, I went and did a seminar after, after that fight, I, I went and did seminars in uh, Denmark and Germany. And, you know, it's like, that was worse. Cause it was like, you know, you guys beat up from the fight, you know, it's like, you just got done, you know, sacrificing and stuff like that. And then you jump on a plane on Sunday morning. And instead of going home, I went to Denmark and then you're teaching <laughs> seminar and then you teach seminars all week long and then driving to Germany and, and teaching seminars there. And then, <clears throat> and then got back to Denmark, teach more seminars. And then I flew home. I was like, oh, I'll never do that again. That, that, was, <laughs> that was really tough. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, it's the only way to make money in some of those cases. Yeah. Though, you know? Right. Well, that's the thing is, is, it's like, you know, I think I made it as much money or more money doing the seminars than I did, you know, doing the fight. You know, it's like, it's just, you know, help pay for stuff. So, fun stuff. You, you mentioned you like travel. I mean, the, the, the cool thing, too, about it, I think, is going back to a city. Like, oh, I've been there before. And it's like, oh, then yeah. you have an idea of what you like, or maybe you can go back to a place and stuff. And that's a good feeling because there are places. That you see you'll never go back to you know what i mean but if like you get back to london it's like oh shit i can do that again you know yeah, yeah cool. you know it's like london you know it's like they told me to you know take the two or to take a taxi you know they, they'd reimburse us for the taxi well you know i got online and figured out okay i can buy a, uh, a week-long tube ride for freaking the same price as that taxi ride you know so that's what i did and it's like and so then i, I had access to the tube for the rest of the week and they had paid for it, you know, it's like, cause I just told them I took a taxi and they didn't ask for a receipt. So it's then it's like, you know, then I, then I, uh, you know, you just figure it out how to ride the tube. It's a public transport uh, and you got all over the city, uh, you know, and that, that was, uh, you know, you know, trying to be resourceful and try to get, you know, get your money worth and stuff like that out of, out of, out of the experience, you know, so it, that was fun. You know, it, it's always fun to go someplace new. It's very fun. I remember it threw me off when I first went over there. They like I'm used to fighting in Japan where they would pick you up at the airport and everything. And I show up there and nobody's there to pick me up. And I finally call them like, yeah, you got to get here. So I'm like, what the hell? I, I got all my luggage. I'm in the tube. You know, trying to, I was like, this, this sucks, man. I don't like this. I no, it's, it's different. You know, it's like and a tube is, you know, it's pretty efficient. You know, it's not like some of them. Yeah. You know, but it's not like Japan either. You know, it's like riding the tube over there. It's like. Or whatever they call it in Japan, you know, it's subway. Like, yeah, the subway. You know, it's it's uh, you know, that that one's super clean, and you know, it's the you know, London's not near as clean. So, <laughs> you know, uh, David Terrell is scheduled to fight Trevor Prangley. He pulls out. Yeah. And at UFC 52 is another last minute replacement. Yep. They call Travis Luter. 52. He. I thought 52. He fought. 54. Uh, 54. UFC 54. I fought 50, 52, and 50, yeah. 54. You said 52. 52. 52. Yeah. So 54 is is price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'd hurt that. So it's wait, like wait, I Travis. Hold up, Travis. Yeah. This is where in the comments <laughs> our people have a field day with this. Like I, everything I've done up until this point is completely just Forgotten. meaningless and useless. Yep. 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 Forgotten. Yeah, UFC 54. Go I, ahead. I, 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 let me also mention it. It's Matt Ewan, not Ewan. Ewan. Thanks, yeah. Miguel. Anybody else? <laughs> Any, Chris, anything? You're doing good, buddy. I'm proud of you. That's right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so I take that fight on very short notice. Um, I had hurt, you know, I, I am, I, I've had a bad neck since uh, I, I hurt my neck in like 99. And so it's like my neck will go in and out and I'd hurt my neck. And it's like, um, I decided to take the fight just because it's UFC, um, you know, and I trained with Trevor a lot. I was really confident that I thought I could beat him. And, uh, and he decided to go out and throw freaking punches at my balls uh, right off the bat. Uh, yeah, he hit me three times below the belt in the first round, uh, you know, where they but They were pretty heavy. To, they yeah, did they like, stop? Did they stop it and take points oh, or yeah. anything? All three times. Like the first one was an uppercut to my balls. Ah. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, and my cup fucking caught my one nut and freaking pinched it. <laughs> it's like it was. I should have had a bigger cup, I guess. And uh. um, 
uh, so it hurt. And then, it, and then, uh, he, then he kneed me in the balls like right away. Right. It was like, the first exchange right after. First exchange, and then he, then he, and then, and then he did it again a third time. And it's like I was like, and then I didn't. And then I was just mad. I was just, I was just mad. I just wanted to fight. And uh, um, you know, it's like he won the fight. You know, he won a three round decision. Uh, good for Trevor. I like Trevor. Trevor's, uh, you know, I, I trained with Trevor a lot at the Lions Den. He was living in Dallas for a long time. Uh, um, he, he's a tough fighter. Um, you know, he's like a good wrestler. Uh, you know, and it's like he had, you know, he went on and did, did some decent things in MMA. You know, he had that one belt for a while, uh, you know, that was a pretty big belt. Um, you know, he had a lackluster career in the UFC. Uh, you know, it's like, I think uh, Jeremy Horn ended up beating him uh, uh, on his last outing in the UFC, if I remember right. So, you know, but he's a good guy. You know, I like Trevor. What happened yeah. there with the, what, what's your explanation for the low blow? Is it, what, what, I don't know. We've never I know Trevor him. real well. Yeah, we, we've never talked about it. Uh, I've never sat down and asked him why. I, I'm convinced that he went out there and did for sure the first one on purpose and more than likely the second one. And I think the third one was probably accidental. Uh, you know, I just think he, you know, it's just, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll get in his head. You know, it's like, I, I, I think it was just a tactic and good for him. You know, he got in my head. You know, it's like, uh, Damn. you know, it's, I, I, you know, it's fighting, you know, all's fair and love and war. And he won that one. So good for him. You know, beat the shit out of me. You're, you're nicer well, about than me. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it's, it's, it, what do you do, man? It's like uh, I don't know. You know, it's like sometimes you know I should have hit him back. You know, I, I, in the nuts. Yeah, you should have hit him. In the you should have. I I for sure should have went out there and just kicked him straight in the balls. You know. It's yeah. Like, yeah. And, if we're gonna play this game, all right. You know. Well, it's well because it's like back then they they want to. You know they're they're not taking a point. They're not doing anything. You know they, so they just start. You give you five minutes. You know it's like I never took the full five minutes, and then they won't let you talk to your corner. Is it, it, it kind of messes you up? You know it's like you know. It, um, well, I didn't like it. You know, but oh well, it's all good. You know, yeah, so I had one of those where I got hit low blow three times too in the in the fight, and they didn't take away a point at all either. Man, I was just I was hoping to earn a point out of it because it was a close fight, but it, they never got it. But still thought it was uh yeah it was. Yeah, is what it is. All on the first round, it was crazy. You know, it's like Damn. Trevor could fight. He was strong. You know, it's like he was very, very strong human. You know, it's like uh, decent stand up. You know, uh, awkward, awkward fighter, awkward fighter. So, what was your relationship it? like with Joe Silva? I don't like Joe Silva at all. Okay. <laughs> Could you uh, expand on that? Like with the yeah, reasons we did. Had- He's a dick, you know, it's like, he's just, he's just an asshole. And it's like, you know, I'm happy he's not in the UFC anymore. So I, I don't have to bite my tongue, uh, but fuck Joe Silva. You know, it's like, uh, he's just an asshole. You know, it's like, he's a condescending little prick, you know, fuck him. So yeah, I don't like Joe Silva. You know, it's like he, he, that, that's, you know, uh, Dana White owes me $36,000. Uh, fuck Joe Silva. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> He, you know, it's like that's somebody that, you know, you've got there, you know, before I fought uh, Matt Linland, before I fought Matt Linland in the back room, you know, he walked up to me, listen, we're never bringing you back to the UFC if you have, have another round like that first one that you had against uh, um, wow. Marvin Eastman. You know, it's like, I mean, I'm ready to walk out. I'm completely and totally warm you know it's like i'm ready to go to the cage and that's the last thing that you're hearing from somebody that uh, in power from the ufc and it's like this is like you're questioning yourself <laughs> as you're going oh, i gotta go out there and fucking really go i gotta go it's like you know it's like this is you know leave, leave me alone i, I, I want to fight you know let that's going to give my i want to win you know it's like and he's, he's basically telling you that if you if you fight like that you know, we're never bringing you back you know it's like Brandon, it, it, it's it's hard to take that from a person who's never been in a fist fight you know what i mean it's just like right. man, if you've been out there and did it it's one thing but it's not even cool to do them but it's really hard to hear that from somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about yeah and it's just you know he doesn't know 
anything about nothing. You know, it's like, and he's a matchmaker and that was his job. And uh, do I think he did a good job? No, I think he's a jerk. And it, it's like, you know, it's like, it's not that he's just rude and condescending, but it's like, I just don't think he's very good at his job. You know, it's like, but, you, know you know, that being said, it's like, I, you know, what's really good that people like Miguel, people like keep home. My guy, you, you deal with trying to get a guy to fight another good guy for $400 that's matchmaking. The UFC, they can call anybody in the world. Everybody's, I mean, that's the easiest job in the world just to call. You want to fight for the UFC? Yes. Everybody says yes, and they're going to take the money. There's just – that's got to be the easiest matchmaking gig I've ever heard of. I mean, uh, people like Miguel have to earn it and actually know how good fighters are, develop them. UFC just calls guys, and it's, it's so easy of a job, I think. But maybe I'm simplifying it. You know, I, I I tend to agree. You know, it's like – but I just – no, fuck, fuck Joe Silva. Yeah, I don't – you know, that's – I that's – you know, fuck him. So you know, we've done well, over a hundred of these, and yeah. the kiss of death is Joe Silva know, knowing that you either trained with somebody or that you're friends with someone because that's your next match. Like it's one thing matchmaking in order to try to you know put a product out there. It's another thing just kind of sitting there going, Well, I think those two might be friends with each other. Yeah, that's who I'm gonna. I mean, and, and this kind of falls into that. I mean, I, I have that question set up right there because yeah. you and, you know, you, you two and Trevor trained together. Well, yeah. And here's the other part, too, is is Trevor's another guy I'm, I know, and Trevor will tell you, Joe Silva didn't love him. So it's not like, it's like, here he's got to he hated both guys. You know, it's like. I don't think <laughs> Joe likes anybody. I don't think Joe likes anybody. You know, it's like, I, I, I don't think he, I think he's really trying to make everybody look bad. You know, it's like his, the biggest benefit for him was, is at least one guy walked out of there with an L. If he could make it, <laughs> if both guys walked out with an L, he would have felt a lot better about stuff. You know, and that, that, that's, that's maybe really a draw. <laughs> Nobody would. Yeah. Hey, my biggest problem with him, I remember when they had me and Matt Sarah fight again in, in, in Indianapolis. And, you know, I wasn't looking for that fight. He's like, okay, we got to fight for him. And I was like, it's like, man, first of all, I like Matt. Second of all, the first fight was horrible. I don't want to do this fight again. He goes and tells Matt that I've been calling him for years and begging for a rematch. And totally untrue. And I'm like, man. And so Matt tells me this. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, I, it made me feel like, like I, we're boys. We talk. And he's telling me that I'm going behind his back and tell him totally untrue. So me and Matt brought it up to him when Joe was at the, you know, and he's like, well, he just changed the subject. I'm like, no, I never – why are you saying this? He's like, well, the fight, my, the, the fight is matched now. What's it matter? I'm like, it matters that you told my friend that I'm talking about his back for two years. This is bullshit. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't like it. I'm like, you tell me to fight mine, I'm going to fight him. You don't go tell him behind his back that I'm talking shit about him, man. Yeah. That's messed up, man. This is messed up. Yeah, I just – you know, it's just the way that they would treat you when you lost. You know, it's like that that was the, you know, it's like, listen, you know, it's like you liked me before, but now you're telling me I'm man, I can't it, fight. You know, it's like, and you. that's the thing, like, they've never lost a fight and understand. It's so weird. Like, I don't know how many times I've apologized to like my people, or, and I remember, I never really got it till once when Matt Mitrill apologized to me, and I was like, dude. Don't ever apologize to me for losing a fight. You did everything. That, no, that's not how it goes, but how bad you feel. And then have them jump on top of him like, you've never fought. Shut up. You know, that that bothers you if they don't treat you right. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. So, so, Travis, Chris is a union guy. He's a fireman. Yeah. In no, those not. types of jobs, sometimes issues take place where it's settled with, no, 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 no. Both of us are going to talk to that person. You're not going to take my word that I didn't do this or say that. And that's right. the approach Chris took, you know, with Joe Silva at that point, which is something he probably wasn't used to. No, I'm sure not. You know, it's like, yeah. well, Joe just, you know, but all the matchmakers that I've dealt with at the UFC, they're, 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 none of them are, I don't know, you know, there, I haven't had very many good experiences with, you know, with, and I, I only had to personally deal with Joe, you know, it's like when I was, when I, you know, cause he was the matchmaker at the time, you know, but it's like my experiences with the new guys, you know, isn't very good either. You know, it's like, it, I, no, I'm not fighting, you know, so I don't, I'm not dealing with them directly, but it's, like, you know, how I got into it with one of them in the back room watching the fights afterwards. Uh, cause the, 
uh, Kevin had had words with one of the fighters that we fought that night. We won, and, and so I'm in the back. I'm in the 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 TV room after the fight, watching the fight back when they used to do that shit. They haven't been doing it since COVID. Um, you know, so we're watching the fights, and they come in and they sit down, and they're like over here. Well, then Kevin shows up and sits down with us, and they're like the next table over, and they get upset and they go tell. The matchmaker that we're using that you know that we're you know they're they're, they're upset that kevin's there like we were here first fuck you you know and it's like it's, it's, <laughs> we, I, I just said i'm not leaving they they wanted me like the security came over and told me to i had to leave and I'm, fuck you i'm not leaving you know it's like I, I was here first if they don't like sitting here next to me i'm not bothering them i didn't say anything to them kevin didn't say anything to them i'm not leaving fuck you and uh and then, so then the matchmaker shows up and he's mad and it's like and i'm like you know hey man i was here first i don't know what the fuck they told you but it's like i'm not leaving you know you guys set this up for the fighters you guys want to start up a two separate ones so that we don't argue afterwards that's fine but i'm not bothering them neither is kevin you know and we're gonna sit fucking right here and he was mad and it's like i'm not leaving you know it's like you can call security you can drag me out of here but i'm not fucking leaving and and it's like i love it you know it's like no it's like it's just there's right and wrong and principle like, man no. principle. Look, look your trends so was this an a side b side type thing like the person that we're having issues with might have a, a like a bigger social media presence so we have to leave i mean where do they kind of draw the line they were just they were just he was just being a dick you know it's like and it's like and it just doesn't matter it's like i don't care it's like you know i i it's like, we will fight right now it's like this is what we do you know i will fight you right here in this room i will fight them you know it's like, it doesn't matter. you know it's like it, this is just because i'm not getting paid doesn't mean i'm not gonna fight i'm not causing a problem i'm not gonna let you bully bully me around you know it's like and it's like you know it's like you bring in the security i'm gonna fight them you know it's like it's like go get a police officer and arrest me but that that i'm not going to not you know it's like you're not gonna bully me you know, it's like, I'm, I not, love I'm not into it. You know, it's like, it's just, you know, it's, it's right and wrong. And I wasn't in the wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Kevin didn't do anything wrong. We just want to watch the fights. You guys set this up for us to watch. We eat food and we watch fights and I'm sitting here not bothering anybody. This is what I'm doing tonight. You know, it's like, if they have a problem, they can leave. You know, so how does it get resolved? They left. <laughs> like Damn straight. <laughs> How about were their feelings hurt? I, I don't so. care. <laughs> is, that, is that why they left? Their feelings got hurt. I don't know. Yeah, they they were just mad. You know, it's like I can't even remember the guy's name. That, that, the, which fight this was? You know, it's like it's just I kind of remember what they look like. Kind of. It, you do not care. They're just they're not important to me. They're not my friends. You know, it's like it's, the biggest thing was is that, that that guy was not going to remove me from that room. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, Kevin's going to leave. No, he doesn't. You know, Kevin's going to sit right here. You know, you know like, it sounds like, it sounds like, you know, to, to an ordinary person, it may very well sound like, oh, you know, they're, they're fighters. So, you know, they get together and they, they argue and they fight and stuff like that. But on fight week, anything going on there as a matchmaker inserting, you're right in the middle of the mind games that they play with each other. Right. You've got to leave that stuff between them you can't really become involved in that you know what i right. mean that's that's the part of it because you don't know you don't know how, what their mindset is you know the fight's over the fight's over you know the, the, we won you know it's like you okay. guys are upset the worst. <laughs> we were here you know it's like you guys don't want to sit by us that's fine yeah you know, don't don't come okay go, you know, go don't sit down. that's crazy that. you know it's like don't but don't because you guys went and complained think that I'm going to move, but we were here first. And they, and they lied, of course, and said that, you know, that we, they were there first. I go, listen, man, I've been in here since the fight fucking ended. I was hungry. I came in here. I sat down and I've been watching the fights ever since then. And now I'm talking to you. And it's like, they came in, they sat right there. And then they got up and they left when Kevin, Kevin here, and they went, and they went and complained to you. And I would guess that they told you that you came in first. That's not true. I was sitting right here. This is my chair. I'm not moving. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. <laughs> no. I love it. I love it. That, so, that feels good. <laughs> well, here, check, do, do you guys got to check out this crazy run that Travis goes on. His next bout, February 4th, 2006, Cage Rage. Again, Pele. Yeah. 
you know, ooh, that's a 21 and nine. Pele Landis, at one point, one of the greatest fighters in the world, beats. I think he's got a win over Pet Militich while Pet Militich was the UFC champion. Yeah, he did. Uh, and he beat Matt Hughes. He, he, uh, he, he did a knee on, on Matt Hughes. He knocked out Hughes. Uh, Pele, you know, he fought Pele Bell. He lost the decision in a 25 for 30 minute fight in Brazil. Uh, you know, it, it was it, with no. no Joe Hill no de Oliveira. Yeah. Uh, no, no, he's, he's talking about he's talking about Paley's fight with Chuck in IVC. With Chuck, yeah, oh, with yeah. Chuck in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, wow. no, no, you're right. I mean, Paley's a legend. He's uh, he's another friend of the of the podcast here. But uh, I like Pe- I, I like him. You know, he, he didn't speak very much English, but you know, he, he man, it's like you know, he's one of the first fights I ever saw. You know, it's like it's like you know, by the time I got to him, you know, he, he was. You know, he's probably past his prime and stuff like that, you know, but it's like he's one of the – him versus uh, – Now, Mike. Joe Hill de Oliveira, 98 headbutts. I don't know. That, not that one. <laughs> That's not the fight I was referring to. But, you know, he's, he's just a really good fighter. He, uh, you're talking awesome. about the Makako fight? Makako, yes. You know, it's like that, that fight where he got mounted and you know, escaped. And, you know, it's like uh, I think he humped uh, – uh, Macaco's face, you know, it's yeah. like they're, 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 you know, they're, they're Brazilians, you know, they're, they're rough, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Macaco actually had him mounted and ripped an earring out of his ear and threw it out into the crowd during the fight. Hey, don't wear an earring, I guess, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's Pele. <laughs> so we close out with Pele Landis, obviously, armbar, fantastic performance on your end. And we roll into May 6, 2006, the international freestyle fighting with Cedric Marks, the Spider-Man. Do you recall this fight or interacting with him? How, how was he at weigh-ins and during the fight? Cedric Marks, was that in Fort Worth? That, that was in Fort Worth? Yes. Yeah, that was right before I went on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, yes. he was an idiot, but, you know, that, that kind of comes with the territory. You know, it's like there are lots of fighters are dumb. So it's like I didn't remember him being – any more stupid than you know some guys? <laughs> he was an idiot. But that was that was about it. You know, and it was nothing that stood out. Nothing, you know. It's like uh, after the fight, you know, he wanted a rematch. It's like, dude, I sub- subbed you in like two minutes. You know, it's like what what part of the fight you you won zero seconds of this fight? You know, you want a rematch? It's like this is silly. Go away. You know, it's like you you, you go learn to fight. And, and then we can talk about other things. But this is silly. It's like you're not, you know, you didn't win any parts of this fight. You know, it's like I took you down. I subbed you. But did you tell him that? Just like that? Yeah. It's like uh, more than likely, you know, it's like it's kind of how I talk. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, it, you, the, the odd thing is there's some weird parallels between yourself and Cedric Marks. Miguel, would you mind telling everybody Travis's nickname? Travis is known as the serial killer. Okay. Interestingly enough. Interestingly mm-hmm. enough, Cedric Marks, shortly thereafter this, murdered two people, his ex-wife, but you know, and like, he murdered two people. Sorry, his ex-girlfriend and the guy that was visiting her. And then yeah. while in prison, they said, well, wait a minute. He's got an ex-wife that nobody's heard from in years. So Cedric Marks is on death row right now. <laughs> And rightfully so, you know, it's like, it's too bad that, you know, something like that, you know, takes so long to go into effect, you know, it's like, there's ample, uh, ample evidence. It seems like they should just, you know, expedite those guys and get it over with and stop spending taxpayer money to, you know, house them. It's like, you know, I don't know, you know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not in charge and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, it's weird. He, um, mm-hmm. he is in, he's got the telltale signs of a psychopath. Like when you watch the news video of what took place in his case, he volunteered for an interview on the news. His, like, I guess his wife that he was estranged from was in the other room while this took place. And she's just like, no, he absolutely did it. I was in the house. It was the most frightening thing I've ever been involved with. And then Cedric is on the news going, well, she wasn't in the room. So she doesn't know what took place there. I, I think she's being misled. And it's like so straight where he in his yeah. mind is completely innocent. 
it's just the true makings of a psychopath. That's crazy. You know, it's like he can't fight. So it's like that, that's the main thing. You know, it's like as far as MMA, you know, he's, he's a marginal MMA fighter. So it's like no, no, uh, that, that, that's my involvement with him. He can't fight. Wow. So the Ultimate yeah. Fighter <laughs> season four, how do you get involved? How does the phone call come? Um, so it's like, uh, they called me and I originally said, I didn't want to do it. You know, it's like, I, I didn't say no. Uh, but I, I went to, uh, you know, my friends and said, you know, Hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go be locked up in a house. I'd watch the season one, uh, and season two, you know, it's like, it just didn't look like fun. It doesn't seem like something that I would enjoy, you know, being locked up with a bunch of people, um, and then they, they convinced me that, no, I have to do this. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they, uh, they really, really felt like I had to do this. And I said, okay, I'll go through the interview process. And so it's like, I flew out to Vegas and, you know, went through the interview process and that was, you know, that was an experience, you know, it's like uh, getting to do that and I'm competitive. And so like when I'm there, I decide I want to do it, you know, it's like, cause I don't want to be beat by these other guys. Um, and so, like, you know, they're hauling us around. They got, like, 15 of us in a van to do our interviews and to go to the doctor. And, like, we're with... Do you know guys. anybody in the van with you? I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody. Okay. And so it's like, you know, and the shotgun was my seat. You know, it's like we're driving to all these interviews, and I sat in the front seat. Everybody else sat back. You know, and it's like, and so we're in the final van interview. And they're, you know, like, the producer's kind of bored talking to me and kind of wanders off. Um, but there's a, it's a room of like 15 executives and stuff like that, uh, that are interviewing you. And, and they're like, you know, why should you be on here? And I go, well, you know, it's like, uh, I'm the guy, you know, it's like, they go, what do you mean? You're the guy. I go, listen, I was just, you know, we've been bust around to this, all this stuff all day today. And I go, you know, I sat in the front seat all day. Nobody else sat in the front seat. It's not because I tried to get in the front seat. Uh, is or nobody I told somebody to get out it's just I sat there first and then it didn't matter when I got in the car I could get in last that was my seat everybody knew it this is just the way the day is going to go you know everybody else is going to sit in the back I'm going to sit in the shotgun and and that's how that day went and it's like um, you know so all these other fighters are in the back and uh, and that's that's you know and, and that's the line that got me on the ultimate fighter I'm 100% convinced of it. They asked the producer um, to come back. He had taken a phone call and left the room. He comes back. He listens to me tell the story. And, you know, it's like, and he was still a dick, but uh, I just think those guys are kind of always dicks. Um, and he, uh, you know, I, I, I'm convinced that that's the only reason I got on the show is because, you know, I'm a dick too, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd have to be the, the kind of surly quiet, character that you know they were looking for because I, I i i know you too you're not gonna go there and trash talk unless yeah, somebody this stuff it's like that's just not me it's like i don't want to i'm very you know reserved and i i'm you know i'm gonna say i like to speak in truth and and tell the truth and i don't i'm not gonna act like i like you if i don't like you i'm not gonna act like i you know like i dislike you if i don't dislike you, you know, it's like how, what you see is what you get with me. And that's like, and that's how I choose to run my life. And it's like, if I have to put on airs and act a fool to make money, it's like, I'd rather go do something else. You know, it's like, it's not that important to me. And I just, you know, it's like, listen, I, I, I like watching Chael Sonnen as much as anybody else. You know, I think he does his stick was when he was fighting was as good as anybody's, you know, it's like, it's fun to watch and stuff like that. The, it's not me. I can't do that. You know, it's like, I'm not, you know, I, I just want to be me. You know, it's like, I don't want to be an actor. You know, it's like, I, I want to play the part of who I am. And it's like, um, you know, it's like, I like who I am. So it's like, I'm not going to sacrifice that, and, you know, try to act like somebody else. Um, whether there's a camera in front of me or not, you know, it's like, I'd rather just be me. And it's like, I didn't make as much money as a lot of guys. And that's okay. I don't, you know, it's like money wasn't why I ever fought, you know, it's like, I never fought for money. It's like, I didn't want to be, 
abused, I'd pay for a hundred dollars, but it's like, you know, it's like when I made a thousand dollars, it's like, you know, I was excited is, you know, to win that fight as I was any of the other fights I, I won. I didn't get that excited. I got more upset when I lost than I ever when I won. Let me ask you, did they put you through the uh, dog and pony show? Mike, you're on mute. Um, did they put the dog and pony show like, you know, like having to do like sprints and contests with the other guys or was that eliminated that year already? Because we were because we were veterans, we didn't have to do all that stuff. You know, they knew that we could fight, you know, so it's like, you know, we didn't have to grapple, we didn't have to spar or do anything like that. We just showed up, you know, it's like, and it was a personality test, you know, and then a drug test and physical test and, you know, making sure that, you know, it's like we were going to pass everything before they put us in the, you know, like lined us up to get on the show. So it's like, yeah, we didn't have to do that, you know, so, you know, thank goodness, you know, so. So, I was, I was, yeah. Well, we, we've had a few people on here that kind of give the same analogy as that of yourself. They hate losing more than they like winning they just yeah. can't lose <laughs> it is you know it's like it's why i don't gamble i don't gamble because it's like losing money kills me and it's like i just can't hardly stand it winning it i don't care you know it's like oh i have a hundred dollars more than i had before it's like that doesn't really do much for me uh but losing a hundred dollars is like oh my god this is you know it's like this isn't fun so i just don't do it you know, it's like, dude, I've been on one UFC fight in my life. You know, it was Chuck Liddell versus uh, Randy Couture the first time I won. I was happy. I never did that again. You know, it's like, it's just, it's just not something that I'm, you know. That, uh, I'm the same way. I hear those like athletes that lose a couple hundred thousand dollars at a craps table. I can't wrap my head around even risking that money for the amount of good that you could have done with it. Yeah, I just, it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just not into it. And, uh, you know, um, if, if I was trying to make a living doing it, that would be different. But this isn't what I do it for a living. You know, it's like, it's, I don't think it's fun. So it's like, it doesn't move the needle for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and with fighting, you know, it's like fighting was about, you know, it's like, am I as good as I think I am if I was right? And why am, why am I even that excited? You know, I was right. And it's like, if I lost... No, okay, now I'm upset. You know, it's a, where was the mistake? What was wrong? It's it's uh, win or learn. You know, it's like and, and when we lose, we when we lose, we learn, and that's the only way I wanted to look at it. I want to look at it, see what I did wrong, how the mistakes I made, and then move forward. Let's go through some of your fights in the house. You started with Scott Smith from yeah. Capital City Fight Alliance. Yeah, he's a, he's a guy that's in the room with Poppy's Martinez, James Irving. Um, absolutely. A top tier competitor, very tough. Was yeah, that a difficult fight for you? Um, you know, him and I, had, you know, it's like they put you in that damn, damn house. Uh, you know, it's like, and everybody runs like a little kid to go get their room. Uh, you know, it's like, and, and so then they've got one room where I forget, like half the group is sleeping in. And I, it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm too old to run for freaking a room. It's like, I'm an adult. I don't, I'm not going to be a little kid and go running for a room when I get in the house. Uh, so I was the last one up there and it's like, okay, this is their bed left. And I grabbed the mattress off of it, took it to the living room. And that was my room. And Scott Smith showed up a couple nights later. And so he was my roommate. Uh, you know, he grabbed his mattress and we moved into the one, one room. And so it's like, you know, we didn't, we were on opposite teams, you know, I didn't want to listen to people fart and snore all night long. So it's like, uh, um, he didn't, you know, he, he did fart, uh, one night I about <laughs> killed him, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, he did, but he didn't snore. So it was, it was okay. And, and we got along, um, you know, it was definitely a weird kind of surreal experience. You know, it's like you're, uh, you're sleeping 20 foot away from the guy that you're about to fight, you know, in 12 hours. You wake up the next morning, you ride in separate vans to go to the same place. You leave at the same time. Uh, you get there, it's like you suit up and shake hands and you, you know, proceed to try to hit each other in the face. And it's like uh, um, David Terrell, I've fought him before. And uh, David did the, you know, it's basically the identical fight that I had with him. You know, I, David was another jujitsu wrestler guy that, you know, it's like, uh, uh, he ended up losing to Evan Tanner 
uh, uh, I think he fought for the title and he lost to Evan Tanner. I don't know if he even fought after that. I, 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 I didn't follow up on his career after that. Um, you know, but it's like, uh, but he, he beat Scott Smith with a rear naked choke, you know, kind of the exact same way that I did. And uh, yeah, he had a pretty big personality too, Scott Smith. Like he was yeah, a funny guy. It's yeah. like, oh, like, you know, he's, he's a good guy. I, I don't know what he does now. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I heard from him in years. Uh, you know, I said, like, but he's a. Uh, I like Scott. He's a good guy. Yeah, it's you go on to fight <laughs> Met Sarah Prodigy. Uh, yeah, Drago. So? Yeah, um, Drago and me. You know, it's like uh, you know he's on the opposite team. Everybody's bored. You know, it's like he, he was fucking with uh, Charles McCarthy one night. You know, it's like ever. You know, the day was over and he was just fucking with him. It's like it's just. Charles, his nickname on the show was Captain Miserable. Uh, it's like, you know, he was just kind of negative and uh, stuff like that. And he's, he's fucking with Charles. And, uh, you know, and, and I finally got tired of listening to it. And I go, you know, listen, you know, I, you know, you know, uh, he said something about fighting. And I was like, let's go, bitch. And, and he really took offend, offense to that. And it's like, you know, listen, you know, it's like, a, I, I just got tired of listening to him. And then, you know, Matt took him upstairs and he wanted to fight right then, I guess. And it's like, you know, I, I don't care. If you want to fight now? That's fine with me. It's like, and he waited. And we, we ended up having our fight. You know, Drago is a tough guy. You know, it's like, uh, he's a very, very tough. He's got you know, lots of power. Him and Scott Smith fought on the final, uh, you know, and Scott. Uh, Legendary he, fight. Yeah. He caught Scott with that body punch, you know, and Scott was beating him up, but it's like, uh, he caught Scott with that body punch. And then, you know, if he would have backed up, <laughs> Scott would have fallen down, but he moved forward and, and Scott hit him with that freaking that right hand and knocked the shit out of him. And, uh, put him to sleep and you know and then he fell down too it's like you know he couldn't have continued either uh but you know scott smith wins you know it's like that was a good good fight um i think drago's still up there in new york with sarah you know i think he teaches now um you know he's a good guy uh, i like drago you know it's like i don't dislike him at all no i mean you're stuck in a house yeah, yeah. We, we've hit everybody that we've had from the ultimate that from the ultimate fighter experience has said man it was a hard adjustment because it felt like you were in prison. The yeah. only person that said they enjoyed it was Brian Garrity, who did six months in prison. And he's like, oh, no, I was used to it. You know, I did time in jail. It was fantastic. I didn't really didn't want to go. I, I was cool there. Matt, Sarah and Drago, since they were both such good buddies, they seemed to like it. You know, it's like they, they seemed really, really happy. Didn't give a shit. You know, Matt's so happy anyway. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, Chris, Chris was on that team. That team was definitely a happier team than mine. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, it, I, I, they, I'm sure they had a decent time, you know, or a lot better time than we did. Uh, um, you know, but it's like, uh, you know, th th those, those guys didn't seem like they hated it as much as, you know, some of us. So I hate it. Don't first I couldn't imagine that. Jorge was on there. You said you yeah. got, you had like a little, you know, quote unquote rematch the first day. But after that, all cool with him because Jordan. No, was cool I mean, it's, you know, when I say rematch, you know, it's just you know, uh, it was just me kind of kicking his ass. You know, it's like, uh, you know, and we trained and stuff like that until I got hurt. You know, it's like, um, you know, and I like Jorge. It's like Jorge's a great guy. It's like you know, I. I you know, I have nothing but kudos to say about Jorge. It's like, you know, it's like I wish him well. And, you know, it's like he, he Jorge's a really, really good guy. You know, it's like I just wanted to get my lick back. You know? <laughs> oh, you got it. And, and after yeah. that, all cool. Like, yeah, no, it was fine. You know, it's like we trained. It's like, um, you know, uh, you know, it's like I, I like Jorge a lot. You know, he's a, he's a good guy. You know, it's like, no, it's like we had no problems. I, I didn't really have problems with anybody other than Shoney. Shoney, the last day of filming after I fought, he was making these weird noises. If you go back in the in the fight, he was just trying to get fucking attention to himself, you know, because he, you know, he he uh, he had lost and uh, um, against Sarah, and then so it's like you know it's like we're, you know they film a whole bunch of the fights on the last day, and so it's like I had fought and he's making these weird fucking noises during the fight just to try to get the camera to look at him. And it's like, you know, it's like, so after the first round, I went and I, it's like, because the cameras, they got a camera that's on the fighters 
uh, on the guys that aren't fighting, the other that we're just watching. There's a camera really right in our face. She can't say anything unless you don't want it to be told. So it's like I grab my mic and his mic and I pulled him in close and I explained to him what the fuck was going to happen if he kept making the noises. It's like, listen, your fight's over. You lost. This, this is done. You, if you don't fucking knock this off, I'm going to take you over there and beat the fuck out of you right now. It's like, let those guys, the camera, the, the, the energy is for them right now, not for, not for us. This is done. You're done. You know, it's like, let this go. And it's like, and, and then, then um, nobody in the, nobody saw it. You know, it's like none of the guys, they were contending with the guys that were in the corner. And, uh, um, and, and so, and then he, okay, okay, okay. You know, okay. And then we went to watch and watch fights and didn't have any more problems with Shoney then. So. Yeah. Shoney is, uh, he's got a pretty big personality and he, he turns it up. He turns it up when he can. <laughs> when that camera is on him, you know, he's, he's just, you know, uh, listen, we're here to fight. You know, it's like, this isn't time to make weird noises. We're not fucking four years old. My kids do that shit. Don't knock it off. You know, it's like, I don't need you to, you know, act like this. This isn't the time or place. You know, it's like, we're watching fights right now. Be, be You're rolling into the finals. How much pressure was it on you? Chris always talks about the pressure because one contract is 100,000 and, you know, second place is 10. Um, he said it bothered him. It, it, he lost sleep. Like it definitely affected the way he, him and Matt Sarah in our interview together both said that it affected them negatively. How was it with yourself? I didn't think about it. You know, I, I didn't, I've never fought for money. I've never fought for, you know, it's like, this isn't about money. This is about, you know, be, am I as good as I think I am? I think I'm better than Patrick Cote, you know? And so it's like, I believed I was better than Anderson Silva. It's like, I, it's like, uh, um, you know, it's like, no, that didn't affect me. I didn't think about it. Hmm. So when the announced you guys, you know, for the tough finals, uh, November 11, 2006 against Patrick Cote, you had very little emotion walking into the cage. Yeah. And it's like a tale of two stories. You see Patrick Cote. I don't think the guy has slept in days. Like yeah. he's jumping up and down. He's ready. And it's not like an energy that just kind of comes with the moment. This guy's been riding a high for a long time. Yeah, Patrick, you know, he really liked all this stuff. You know, it's like as far as like being, uh, you know, he liked the idea of being famous. You know, it's like he, he's, you know, he's trained with George. You know, George was having a lot of success. George, I think, had become champ by this point. Yeah, St. Um, Pierre. Yeah. He, he, was, he was very excited about the prospect you know it's like you know but he but if i remember back at ufc 50 when he fought in the ufc for the first time against tito you know he was super excited that night too. you know it's like this is patrick you know it's like patrick's you know patrick likes the limelight you know he likes all these things i don't care about any of those things i only care about fighting i i just wanted to see if i was as good as i was you know it's like it doesn't matter if it happens in the gym. It doesn't matter, you know. It means more if I if I do it, you know, on the biggest on the bigger stage. But it's like, uh, um, from I just I'm just wired a little bit different, I guess, than some of these. Guys. You don't like fame at all, do you? No, I do not like it. I didn't like being famous. It's like I didn't like, you know, I don't like people knowing who I am. I don't, you know. It's like I, I want to be respected by other fighters i want to be respected by people who understand fighting but i do did not like being famous it's like you know after the ultimate fighter or during that that whole time people coming up to you and you know asking for your autograph while you're eating it's like i'm i'm eating you know it's like i'm going to do it i'm going to be pleasant i'm going to be uh you know nice you know it's like if i'm in a ufc event somebody asked me for a picture that's not a problem you know it's like i've stood and signed autographs or and taken pictures for you know, hours after events, you know, that, that, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. I'm at the UFC, but it's like, if I'm having dinner with my family and you come up and want to talk to me about fights, it's like, fuck you, get the fuck away from me is what I want to say. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not there for, you know, <laughs> like for, for this, I'm here trying to eat, you know, it's like, you know, it's like if I see you in the airport, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I don't mind taking a picture with you. It's like, but I don't want to talk to you. You know, it's like, I don't, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'm not, you know, it's like, I don't know you. Why would I want to, it's like, you know, if I said Miguel at the airport, I'll stop. Hey, how are you? You know, it's like, if I know you, if I like you, you know, it's like, 
But um, but if if you're a stranger, no, I, I'd really prefer that leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just it's, me. Yeah, no. No, I, and, and I I'm here to vouch that, you know, when he was. 20 years younger, he's exactly the same way. I, absolutely exactly the same way. No nonsense. Kind of really just want to talk about fights and that whole thing. And everything else didn't really excite him. You know, no. going out afterwards or, you know, there's none of <laughs> No, I don't care about those things. You know, it's like, I just, you know, it's like, I like, I like what I like. You know, it's like, I like motorcycles. I like, you know, I like cars. It's like, those things are cool. It's like, uh, I like, you know, I like my kids. I like my, I, I like my wife. You know, it's like, I like my life. I like my students. You know, it's like, I, it's like, uh, I like my wife sometimes. <laughs> right. so, like the lockdown, you know, I, I thought I needed people less than I did, uh, you know, before the lockdown, you know, we got locked down in Texas for six weeks, you know, where I wasn't supposed to go to the gym and teach. Uh, that was a miserable time. I did, you know, it's like, and it wasn't like I was, you know, it's like I was busy. It's like I painted my house. I freaking did a whole bunch of stuff outside, uh, you know, and, and these are things that needed to be done or whatever. It's like, I'm a pretty busy person in general, but man, not going and teaching. I still went taught, but it's like, it was just, I had to be underground. It was miserable. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, you weren't seeing your friends. You weren't, you know, or at least not all of them and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, um, that was a terrible time, you know, for me to be alive, you know, it's like, it's like so I figured out, okay, I do need people a little bit more and stuff like that. But I still, you know, it's like, I have to have my distance. You know, it's like, I'll come be social, go to my gym, do my do the things that I do, uh, you know, but then I'm ready to leave and go do, go, you know, ride my motorcycle or spend time with my kids, you know, stuff like that, you know. That, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'm not that <laughs> social. Yeah. So yeah, that's... you win, you beat Patrick Cote yeah. and uh, by armbar. And you win the right to fight Anderson Silva, which is yeah. a huge deal. Anderson's an absolute stud. Um, would you mind walking us through that? Because something happens in that fight that had me on the edge of my seat, just screaming at the top of my lungs. You know, I mean, leading up to the fight, you know, it's like this was my sixth fight in a calendar year. I fought Pele, you know, about 12 months before I fought uh, um, him. This is my sixth fight. I never have fought that much. Um, you know, yeah, wrestling is a little bit different, but it's like you have to make this weight, Trump pulling all this weight down. Um, you know, and then uh, it was just, you know, it's like I came in a little heavy. You know, it's like I, I was, I was, I was heavy you know, for that weight cut, you know, it's like with Patrick, I was about 205 pounds, uh, you know, which was, you know, I don't know, I was cutting from 200 to 205, you know, most of the time, probably closer to 200 was a decent weight cut for me. Uh, you know, for Anderson, I came in around 212, 213. Uh, so I was, I was significantly heavier and I really thought I'd be able to pull the weight off. Um, you know, so it's like, I'm in, uh, you know, uh, the morning of, you know, the weight, weight cuts are a little bit different. They give you a few more hours now than they used to. Uh, you know, or it's like, you know, as far as like in between the actual weight cuts, you, know, you weigh in in the morning now. Uh, whereas we were weighing in in the afternoon, you know, 24 hours out from the fight, 24 really is 26, 20, 28, because it's like, you know, we are weighing in around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Now it's in the morning. Uh, you know, so I, 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 you know, I wake up, I go start doing my weight cut. Uh, I pull off a pound. I check my weight, I go back in the sauna. Uh, I come back out expecting to be down a couple, couple more pounds and I, I lost any weight. And so it's like, were you I, eating salt? Was there something in, you think in your diet that may have done that? No, I think I was just dried out. You know, it's like, I, I, I think I, you know, I pulled off all the weight the night before. It was difficult, you know, it's, but it's like I, I pulled off, you know, so I got myself, I just think I was, I was, dry, I was just out of water, you know, or essentially out of water, you know, so I go back in the sauna and I end up spending hours in the sauna, you know, and just not pulling off any weight. You know, it's like, I'm just, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm losing, you know, not very much weight over the course of an hour. And, and this goes on and it's like, I finally just, I used to go, I'm not going back in. I'm 187 pounds, 188 pounds, 
whatever I was. And I go, I'm not going back in the sauna. It's like, I'm going to die in there. And, uh, you know, and they're like, listen, you have to. And I'm like, you know, my corner guys are like, you have to go back in the sauna. I go, I'm not going back in the sauna. I was, I'll, I'll go home. I don't, I don't want to fight anymore. I'm just, you know, it's like, I'm not going back in that fucking sauna. You guys can do whatever you want, but we're going to shave your head. Go and shave it and shave away. I don't care. You know, it's like, yeah, I go, I don't think it weighs very much, but you know, you guys can do whatever you want, but I'm not getting back in that fucking sauna. Um, and, uh, you know, it's that like, sucks. I can't walk at this point. You know, it's like, I'm, you know, it's like, you know, I'm shuffling with help. You know, it's like, it's, you know, it's like, but I'm not, you know, I, I'm just, you know, I just put my feet down. I'm not going back to the sauna. And, uh, um, you know, so I go to Wayans, I'm over. They send me, the UFC sends me back to the sauna. Uh, I go in the sauna for a little bit and, uh, you know, and now I'm not protesting. You know, it's like, you guys want me to sit in the sauna? I'll fucking sit in the sauna. You know, it's like, uh, and they, they said I had an hour, I think, um, but my guys pulled me out. Uh, they said that I was going to die. And it's like, and put me back on the, on the scale. I didn't lose any weight. Um, no weight? No, it's like, I was still, you know, essentially the same. You know, it's like, I didn't pull any more weight off. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and then I started the rehydration project process. And then, they, and then the UFC, you know, they want to interview me. Yeah, you know, it's like, and I tell them, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be interviewed. And they, 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 you know, so then they got send somebody to my room. You have to come be interviewed. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm not going. Fuck you. I'm fucking rehydrating right now. Uh, it's like, I'm going to eat and stuff like that. That's dangerous. They, yeah, they send up the, somebody else. Dana says you have to. And I'm like, oh, fuck you guys. You know, it's like, and so, you know, so they, they take me down and they interview me. And, uh, you know, I'm like, guys, you know, it's like, I, I need to be fucking rehydrating eating right now I, I don't want to be talking to you guys you know it's like well you have to and so then they're asking you all these stupid questions and you know what went wrong well, it's too fucking heavy it's like i was just you know it's like it was a mistake i yeah i took a risk and i, I failed you know it's like and i was the first guy to you know miss weight in a championship fight i wasn't the first guy to have to miss weight uh you know i i never wished weight you know i wrestled you know 200 wrestling matches uh plus in my my high school college career i never missed weight you know it's like i had all these weighed in all these fights and jujitsu competitions stuff like that i've never missed weight you know so this is just happened to be the biggest stage that i ever you know missed weight and i was the first one you know since then we've had lots of guys that have missed weight for yeah. sure, right you know but it was a big deal because i i was the first um you know, so it's like they interview you, ask you stupid questions, and you know, it's like uh, uh, I'm not very happy, uh, stuff like that. You know, it's like uh, you know, uh, so I go out there to fight Anderson the next day, and I feel okay the next day. I don't feel great. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, I Travis, hey, tra yeah. Travis, let, let's just encapsulate this. Anderson Silva, it's his first title defense. He has got a legendary type of reputation at this point, even though it's his first title defense. Please go through what took place with your grappling. I, I was literally yelling at my TV watching you fight that first round, man. Um, you know, the first round, I, I ended up taking him down. You know, it's like Anderson comes out, and, and when he's in the conventional stance, in, in, a, in a regular right-handed stance, you know, he was just done in my opinion, you know, it's like Anderson Silva plays from the right-handed stance. He's out here. He's setting you up. He's watching. He's seeing how you move. When he switches to his left-handed stance, this is business. You know, it's like, you know, watch him against Chris Lieben. Watch him against, you know, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Rick, Rick, Rich Franklin. Rich Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, it's like when he switches stances, now it's business. So uh, when we went out there, um, I was waiting for him to switch. You know, because it's like, you know, I know that his defense and stuff like that for the wrestling and stuff like is going to be tougher uh, when he's in the right handed stance. But when he starts to commit and when he's wanting to, you know, do damage to me, then, you know, it's like and he's going to make motions like this and try to get you to engage and, you know, stuff like that. And the crowd's going to make noise. I don't care. You know, it's like I, I, I'm going to wait till he switches. And when he switched, then I took him down. You know, it's like uh, I take Ander Anderson down, I pass his guard, I'm 
hitting him in the face. You know, it's like I, I'm, I, and I see his eyes roll back in his head. I'm like, fuck, this fucker's out. You know, it's like he's out, and I hit him again, and he wakes up. I think you mounted him at this point. Yeah, I'm mounted and I'm hitting him from mount. I'm raining down punches, boom, 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 boom. I see his eyes roll back, boom. And I'm like, he's fucking out. And I hit him again and his fucking eyes pop open. And uh, I, uh, you know, he moved. He was really, really long. I was not expecting him being so long to create the problems that it did. Cause he got leverage in weird ways. Uh, you know, that I just hadn't experienced, you know, it's like training with Kevin now, because he's as long as Anderson. Uh, I, I understand it a lot better. It's like he, they, they, it's not their power comes from a different angle, because it's they're just so long. And, uh, um, you know, and so and I lost my balance, you know, it's like, people report that I went for an arm bar that was not an arm bar. That was, that was just, I lost my balance. And it's like, you know, trying to knock him out from mount. Uh, he ends up in my guard, he escapes. Um, I end up, you know, I'm back on my feet. I, I uh, take him down again. Uh, I think, and then the round ends, uh, round ends. I take him down in the second round. Um, I'm in his guard. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm hitting him, you know, it's like any, I, I remember he up kicked me. I came up to my feet, he up kicked me, boom. I was like, fuck. And so I came back down and I go into a triangle. I'm in the triangle. Uh, you know, it's like, he's, uh, you know, he's hitting the top of my head. That was fine. Uh, you know, it's like he, uh, you know, at the time those elbows are controversial. I, you know, it's like my team tried to get me to protest the, the, the elbows, you know, cause you know, there's some people who think those are against rules. I refused. I go, listen, I lost. You know, he is like, I didn't tap because of the freaking elbows. I tapped because of, because I was getting choked. And, uh, um, and Damn. more than anything, I wasn't mentally prepared for, usually I made decisions and I was ready to die. I was like, I was always ready to die when I walked in the ring. You know, it's like I, I always repeated this saying that's good day to die. It's like I just good day to die. You know, it's crazy horse would say it uh, before it was reported to have said it before the battle of Big, Little Bighorn. Um, and I just like the saying. So it's like I would kind of that was kind of my mantra. Uh, but the thought that went through my head was being pissing myself or shitting myself if I went to sleep. You know, it's like so sometimes mm -hmm. people do that. And I wasn't prepared for that, that embarrassment. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Fucking I tapped. And it's like, you know, it's like, I should have been embarrassed. I should have went to sleep. I should have, you know, it's like, uh, um, and that, that was, you know, um, I, sh I chose wrong, you know, and that, I'm more embarrassed by that than I am, you know, it's like the, the losing part, you know, it's like, I, I would have rather went on, went on on my field uh than uh, than tapping in that situation because it's like the elbows yeah those you know they weren't they were not comfortable i don't want to get hit in the top of the head right now but like during the fight i didn't tap because of the elbows i tapped because of the choke so that's you know, part hey, of trip when you had him mounted <clears throat> it just showed just how good your jujitsu was especially with fighting like i'm not going to say it's underrated but I think it's overlooked at how good your MMA jujitsu is. Yeah, well, thank you. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, I, I think, you know, for the, that short period of time, you know, it's like, I think I was, you know, if I wasn't the best in the world, I think I was definitely one of the best in the world. Uh, um, I had I had a really good time uh, fighting. It was, uh, um, you know, uh, there's definitely things I wish I could have done different. You know, it's like, that fight being one of them. Uh, but, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it was, you know, I feel really, really lucky and fortunate to got to do what I get to do. It's like, I got to test myself. I got to, you know, it, it's definitely a, a very nice journey that I got to go on. Uh, you know, I, I ended up not being coming champion. That was the goal. Uh, um, but, you know, I did figure out, you know, it's like, I, I found out that I was as good as I thought I was. Um, I just missed out on my opportunity and, uh, um, you know, in a, you know, different life, maybe, maybe it would have worked out for me. So yeah. now 
a lot of regrets with that, you know, with the Anderson fight, the, the way, you know, at the end, you know, the emotion of losing and stuff like that. It's like, but the UFC gave you absolutely no love. Now I know you didn't make weight and that they don't like right. that stuff like that, but there, there's, you know, there's material there that you can work with. And I, I, did you, how bad was the, the ear beating they gave you about not making weight? Cause you, if you had won, the, the belt would have still been Anderson's right. too. So this, this, yeah. a, you know, and, and all kinds of like, that's a, that's a heavy baggage to walk into the ring too with. So how did they treat you? Cause I'm sure it was all bad. I I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, they were not nice. Nobody was nice. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, you know, uh, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's like, uh, there's no love loss. No, you know, they're definitely, Nobody was nice, but that, that's neither here nor there. That's, yeah, uh, I know you're not asking for, for nice uh, treatment either. You're not no. that type of guy. But like I said, you, you know, with, with the proximity of that, uh, you know, you were this close to beating that guy. You know, right. Dude. <laughs> so if I, there, there's a couple of people that really stand out <clears throat> in regards to their jujitsu as it pertains to mixed martial arts, that at one point in their career, it was – levels above everybody else and it's it's not both of you guys were on the same season it's it's both you and matt sarah yeah. like your jujitsu as it pertains to mma at one point in your life was just light years a, ahead of the rest of the world you know uh, you know my style of jujitsu is a lot different than than matt's you know matt matt i've never gotten to train with matt you know, I've been friends with Matt for a long, long time. I've known Matt for even longer. Uh, I've never gotten to actually roll with Matt. You know, it's like, uh, but I know that our style of even fighting, you know, it's like uh, I started boxing at such a lot, a late age. Uh, you know, it's like I did Muay Thai and JKD, you know, when I was younger, but I was 23 years old or something like that. You know, I didn't start boxing until basically 30. Um, you know, it's like, and you're, you're, you're not, I'm not as fast as I was, you know, it's like at 20 years old. And I knew that, you know, it's like, I knew that I did not want to be, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, I, I was going to get hit more than I wanted to get hit. And, uh, you know, so like wrestling was the answer for me. I'd take you down and beat you up. And, um, you know, cause I just wasn't that fast, you know, it's like, uh, um, so I, I had to have good jiu-jitsu, you know, and, and it's like, and, and I, trained in the gi but i refused to do certain moves from with the gi on because it wouldn't help my jiu-jitsu for mma you know it's like i wouldn't do like lapel stuff it's like i'm i'm grabbing in the same ways uh on the in the gi that i'd be grabbing with no gi and so i, I think that's part of the reason my no gi game uh, was a, a little bit different than a lot of gi guys uh, that you know it's like guys who are really really good at, at jiu-jitsu that struggled in mma i the way that i trained was was really really basic uh so that it would work in and no gi also so it's like uh it was kind of a little bit by design and and then i don't know you know it's like uh i just feel fortunate enough to be in the conversation you know about being good at something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean with carlos we haven't talked about or let you talk about Carlos Machado as an influence, but you, you kind of, I don't want to say lucky, but you, you, you wound up with one of the best teachers out yes. there, you know? Carlos is an amazing teacher. You know, Carlos is, uh, you know, Carlos is a very, very, you know, I was very lucky to have Carlos as my coach. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, and Matt had Henzo, you know, it's like, and, and it's like, you know, and, and at those times, both those guys were teaching, you know, it's like a, a lot of the guys who, sometimes have their name on the door. They don't teach, um, you know, or maybe they don't teach anymore and stuff like that. You know, it's like, uh, but at the time when Matt and I were coming up and our influence was, you know, really, really at, at the optimum times, you know, it's like we were both lucky that we had both very, very good teachers. You know, it's like Henzo is amazing. Carlos is amazing. You know, so it's, uh, you know, that that's a huge, huge part of the you know, the reason that I, I was as successful as I was, even though Carlos never fought, you know, it's like Carlos, Carlos is a jiu-jitsu guy, you know, it's like he's a, um, the other thing is I was training with, you know, Guy Metzger, you know, it's like Guy Metzger was, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I, 
I, I, I have a lot of my MMA fundamentals, you know, it's like, you know, okay, you're going to get hit in the face here. <laughs> you can't do that. You know, it's like, I need to hit you in the face. You know, it's like, I mean, this is, you know, it's like, I mean, and, you know, I was teaching him jujitsu and he was, he was uh, uh, teaching me fucking MMA, you know, it's like, and he had yeah, his, his knowledge, you know, so it's like, I, I was very lucky to have the coaches that I had. Did, did you ever roll with Ken Shamrock? Yeah. How was your experience with him? I rolled with Ken, right? I only helped him train for one fight. And it's like, I met Ken in, in Japan uh, at one of Guy Metzger's fights. Um, and then uh, Ken was getting ready for the Cheeto fight. And, you know, that's, that's, that's not Ken's prime. You know, it's like an MMA is uh, uh, a young man's sport. And, you know, it's like judging somebody based on, uh, you know, it's like uh, of how good they are or not are at this point in time, you know, MMA is freaking, you know, it's like, there's a reason we don't, uh, Randy Couture's of the world don't come along very often. Everybody's usually done way before 42, 43 years old. However, it was when he, when he won that belt, you know, it's like boxing, you know, it's the same thing. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, uh, everybody gets old and uh you know so um it was an experience um yeah I, I don't know ken that well uh you know i helped train him for that fight i don't have ken's phone number i've never had ken's phone number uh you know it's like uh, I, I i came in i did my job uh you know it's like uh he it was an experience and you know it's like uh um you know, it's like I, I went, you know, I did my job. Yeah. Let me let me ask you, when you were, when you did the Abu Dhabi, uh, in Abu Dhabi, was that the year that Carlos Machado actually? The second won? year. The second the year second. was the year that Carlos went and competed, and he lost the lost Fatosa. He lost the Fatosa in the first match. Uh, you know, and Fatosa, uh, Matt Serra lost to Fatosa, in the finals and Carlos lost to him in the first match of the tournament. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Carlos was there that year. Yeah. And how did you, did, did you, did he corner you or did, were you, were you a little aloof? How'd they treat you? Like, I'm just Carlos, trying to remember Carlos, that year. He did corner me, you know, he did corner me and that, that that's the one and only time when Carlos is, I asked Carlos to corner me for the ultimate fighter finale out of respect to Carlos. Um, he, he said, no, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it wasn't part of his priority for that time. And that's okay. You know, so he's busy. He's got, it is, it is it, definitely doesn't hurt my feelings or anything like that. Um, Carlos is, you know, it's like, Carlos is a very good teacher. Yeah, no. And in Abu Dhabi, him cornering you too, he's own, he's owning it. He, you know, he, 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 I, I thought that they might've been like, well, I'm going to, you, you stay over there and we're over here. And it's nice that they didn't do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, and Carlos, Carlos is decent to me, you know, decent to me. So that's good. Cool. Carlos, uh, he was on a conspiracy podcast <clears throat> about a year ago. Yeah. He has got a brilliant mind. Like he is uh, a very interesting guy. Carlos is very, very intelligent. Very, oh, very intelligent. brilliant. Yeah, it's like uh, Carlos is a lawyer. He went to law school. Uh, you know, it's like he when he took the test in Brazil, you know, it's like it'd be like their ACT test or whatever. He had the second highest score in the country that year. You know, it's wow. like get into college. You know, it's like Carlos is really, really smart. He's a very, uh, very intelligent human. You know, it's like a uh, it's flat it's, earther. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he is. It's like, he is. is he really? He, yeah. He's just flat. yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, you didn't consult with me on that one, but, uh, like, <laughs> you know, he's, uh, yeah. Carlos, Carlos is a very, very intelligent guy. It's like, uh, um, and yeah, I, I've had a couple conversations with him as of late about, different things but I, we haven't talked about the earth being flat though so yeah yeah i, I, I tell you after I, I always of course you know me and respected him yeah after listening to his point of view and you know he was on the fence about it it was tinfoil hat sam tripoli eddie bravo's on it 
it is amazing. It's just, yeah. it's a fantastic listen. And Carlos, he held his own and he's just a, he's a brilliant guy. I really enjoyed listening to him. Well, Carlos is, Carlos is a very, very intelligent human. You know, it's like, he's, you know, he's very thoughtful and, uh, you know, he's, he's he, Carlos is a great guy, you know. Yeah. Good so the UFC does you no favors and they put you in against Rich Franklin next. However, I think you had a neck injury cancel yeah. about in between that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. I had hurt my neck uh, competing in, in, uh, in I think, uh, 2000. Um, and mm. I, I was always having different issues with my neck, had to be nice to it, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and I hurt my neck pretty good uh, before the Rich Franklin fight. I had to pull out of it, and then we rescheduled. And, and uh, um, you know, it's like uh, he, he ended up beating me to that day. And uh, you know, Rich, Rich is you. You were a little surly in your pre-fight. You, you you were kind of on fire. I don't know if you were told to be that way or you it know, was just that your normal self. I was. You know, Rich said something that pissed me off, and you know, it's like and. I don't know. I, I think uh, Rich, you know, he, he tried to startle me, you know, like in one of the press interviews, you know, it's like where he just, you know, he's being stupid. And it's like, and it pissed me off. And so, yeah, I was probably, you know, more uh, amped up than I usually am. Yeah, you look pretty amped up. Yeah. <laughs> so after Rich Franklin, now, um, go ahead, Miko. Was that, do you think that you may have also been amped up where you maybe in the back of your mind feeling a little pressure to do something different, I behave a little different? That fight, you know, for my style of fighting, I came in at about 195 pounds. So that was the easiest cut of my weight or of my life. Uh, you know, it's like, <clears throat> uh, you know, it wasn't even a weight cut. You know, it's like, it was just, you know, it was, uh, I was a little light for that fight. Um, you know, he, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, it's like uh, I, I uh, the way that I trained and the things that I did, uh, you know, it's like I changed a, a few things after that fight because because of me getting tired. Um, you know, it's like uh, I think the biggest mistake I made in that fight was is it's like I had that arm bar and I waited for him to tap and I gave him an opportunity to tap and I should have heard him. You know, it's like I should have taken that arm home with me. It's like I had the choice. It was my choice. It's like I gave him an opportunity to tap, and I, I shouldn't have given him an opportunity to tap. You know, it's like uh, I just expected him to tap. You know, it's like I didn't want to hurt him and stuff like that. I should have hurt him. So, so let, let's kind of quantify that. You had him, one, you had his back. Yeah. And then you worked to the mount, <clears throat> and then you went for an arm bar. I think at that level, I think you just got to take an arm, like – you being nice or respectful, it's kind of like that front seat analogy that you gave us. Like, no, it's your front seat. I was good enough that I didn't feel like I had to hurt people. You know, it's like, it was just, you know, it's like, I, I really believed that I was good enough that it's like, I, I just didn't think he was going to get away. And it's like, I gave him, I didn't give him enough respect. And, you know, it's like, I, like, oh, fuck, I got this. This is mine. And and he immediately turned. I was like, fuck, it's gone. You know, it's like, and it was it was gone and that quick. You know, he turned his thumb and and, and he got away and good for him. And, you know, he he, had, he had drilled, drilled that. I think he was training with Hume at the time. And uh, um, and he, you know, and they had drilled that escape a bunch. And it's like, and good for him. You know, it's like, good for him. You know, I, I saw. He lived with Matt Hume for an entire month. Right. Yeah, practicing it's like, for you. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, he said in one some interview or a TED talk or something like that, that, that was his proudest fight that he ever had was is the fight against me. You know, it's like because uh, he was, you know, super, super tired after that first round and managing to, you know, overcome that he felt like was his greatest victory inside the octagon. You know, so cool. I, I take that as a compliment to me. Yeah. Uh it's like uh you know, I, I mean, because it's, you know, it's like he, he fought really, really good guys. I mean, he beat Evan Tanner. He beat, he beat a lot of really good guys. You know, he lost to Anderson twice badly. But, um, you know, it's like, but, you know, he, he was a really good fighter and, and rich. Um, yeah, he's you know, probably like a top five all-time middleweight, you know. if you if Right. You know, it's like, you know, there was a time when he was the number one guy in the world. You know, yeah. and, uh, 
um, you know, I, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I really truly believe I'm, a, I was better, but, um, but I lost. And, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it's like, I think I showed, even when I lost, you know, I showed that I meant to be, I was, I belonged there and I was, I was good at what I did. And, uh, and I didn't know to get my hand raised at the end, but it's like, I, I was in there. It's like, I, I think, put it this way. If we would have been training together, it's like, if we train together every day, it's like, I don't lose, you know, it's like, I, I it's like, you know, I'm going to lose. a am just not going to lose to a guy like that. You know, it's like, I was a better fighter. So it's just that yeah. he won that night. So good for him. But from a UFC perspective, you, you fought their two top guys at the time. You yeah. Number one and two. I mean, you let's work. The, you took him into the second round. Like you said, you belong in terms of fight level and stuff like that. And yeah. they let you go. Yeah. How did that conversation go? What, you know, they haven't there been was, happy with you and they've probably been letting you know. Tell us how there it went. Was, there was no conversation. Uh, you know, uh, that jackass that we talked about, uh, the Joe, matchmaker. Joe, uh, Joe Silva called my manager and said, you know, we're letting Travis go. You know, that was it. You know, that's like, it. That was it. You know, I sent, uh, uh, I had exchanged emails with Dana before, uh, just emails. So I sent Dana a message and said, what the fuck? You know, it's like, uh, you know, I was nice. I was respectful and stuff like that. I, I, no answer. Uh, it's like, uh, and then it's like, you know, I sent him another email and said, where the fuck's my $36,000? You know, it's like, uh, and again, in a nice nice way no no response you know it's like uh um i've saw dana since then dana's always talks to me he's always always nice to me he's always cordial um uh, you know it's like i'm always cordial back uh you know it's like it's um you know but no it's like it, there was no conversation there's no no fuck That's you wild. so yeah. you end up in canada with mark pavlich and the maximum fighting championship against Jason McDowell, he's kind of a controversial promoter. You know, he's got a very loud personality. Yeah. How was your dealings with him? I didn't deal with him much. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I met him. I was at a Super Bowl party in Vegas with a buddy of mine. And I met him there before I ever fought for him. And he was telling me who he was and I didn't know who he was and I didn't care. He liked, uh, he liked that, didn't he? Telling yeah. you who he was. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I just, you know, it's like, um, and then they contacted me about fighting there. It's like, that's fine. You know, it's like, so I went to Canada and fought, and, you know, uh, sounds good. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's different. How was McDonald? He's another tall dude. Oh, Canadian. In yeah, Canada. In Canada. Yeah, he was tough. You know, it's like we fought in a, a ring. You know, it's like, so I hadn't done that for a few years. You know, it's like, so we did that again. Um, you know, that, I was in good shape. I changed some some of the ways that I trained. Uh, I did a lot of heart rate training for that fight. Um, you know, and so I didn't get as, you know, tired. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I you know, it was, it was my fight. You know, it's like I won a decision. It wasn't too exciting, but uh, I won. Uh, and yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. when 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 the UFC cut you, yeah, and you, they talked to your manager, obviously. But like, was there? Sometimes you hear them say, "Oh, you know, win a few, win three in a row, or or whatever, and we'll bring you back." Did was yeah. that a line that you heard, or was that the goal? Yeah, I, I was trying to get back to the UFC. Uh, you know, it's like or fight someplace. You know, it's like. You know, that was a weird time in MMA because it's like, you know, a year before that, you had quite a few different shows. You know, it's like a year or two before that, you're Pride. There was, you know, there was other options to go fight in. And well, then the UFC bought Pride and, and that went away. And then there was, you know, it's like this was like a really low moment in options for, for MMA to go fight. You know, it's like this is before Affliction. This is before... Uh, one, which one? One, yeah, one FC. This is before so a lot of these shows that kind of came up afterwards. So there just wasn't very many places to go fight. You know, there was no money, there was no anything like that. So it's like you know, but I wanted to fight. And, um, so I went up there and fought. And, you know, it's like uh, I was happy to get the win. You know, it's like uh, 
uh, McDonald's tough guy. And, you know, I was happy to, happy to beat him. So, you know, it was good. And uh, you close out your career with Moose and I think that's Corey Fisher as a promoter. Yeah. Um, Rafael Natal, who was 11 and two at the time, Henzo student. Yeah. He uh, had, after this fight, he had a 17 fight streak in the UFC. Like he, I mean, anybody that's got more than 10 fights in the UFC is just mind blowing. And he hit 17. Natal was a guy that I should have, should have walked with the thought. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, he, he's a different fighter. Five days before the fight, I, I broke uh, my disc in my neck. So it's like I, I, I fractured the disc. Uh, you know, it's like I, had a, I ended up having a three level fusion after the fight. Uh, but it was five days before my last training day. Um, might have been six days. I don't remember. Five or six days before the last, uh, you know, it's, so it's my last hard training session. I'm sparring. Um, I have kind of a hybrid a cage where it's like you got the cage but then on the sides is dollar more mat at the time i'm only running quarter inch dollar more mat really really thin and plywood behind it and the guy against the cage and we there was a movement and i pushed back in and the guy wasn't there and i hit my head and, and fractured that vertebrae in my neck no and, so I, I hang on, I recover the position and I'm in extreme pain. And I'm like, you know, it's like, and I hold on for a little bit. I go break, 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 break. And I sink. I go to my knees, uh, you know, session is over. You know, this is, it was the third round. It was the last two and a half minutes of my training. Um, and I'm fucking hurt. You know, it's like, and I, uh, so everybody leaves and I go, to try to run. I've got one, one trainer there. Uh, and we're, I'm going to go try to, you know, just to run to see, I can't run. It's like, you know, I'm in an extreme pain. It's like, I go a couple hundred yards and I sit down and it's like, and, uh, I'm like, I don't think I can fight. Like, no, no, you'll be fine. You, you've been hurt before. You know, it's like, I, I've had neck problems and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't think I can fight. You know, and it's like, and he's like, no, you'll be fine. You've spent all this money to do this. You'll be fine you need to at least go get paid you know, you're gonna win this and blah 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 it's, you know it's, he's just being positive doing his job and i'm like i don't think i can fight and so uh i shut up about it after that and i don't say anything else um you know and it's like oh. and i i try to run during the week i can't run i can't run i it's like i got just nothing's working and uh i'm like well i'll probably once the fight starts i'll be fine and um you know, I go into the octagon, you know, I'm warm, I'm moving around. Um, and, and it's like, and that first punch that hits me is just, I get a stinger that goes down. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever had a stinger, but it's like a stinger, you know, like a, a, a bad one's when it goes into down your neck and into your fingers. And I get it on both hands. And, uh, you know, it's like, like I said, I fractured this vertebrae. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't go to the doctor. I didn't have health insurance at the time. Um, and it's like, and uh, so I didn't get an x-ray. I didn't get anything. Um, but, you know, I'm fucked up. And it's like, and so then that, that fight, you know, it's like after that point, I can't use my arms really. It's like they're up, that they're not... I have no strength, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, I, I end up getting TKO'd in that fight. Um, you know, it's like, I'm like, so I wait to heal. And it's like, and so it's like, I, I go see a doctor, you know, it's like, they're like, oh, you need an MRI. I, go, I don't really want to pay for an MRI. I'm going to wait. And so, um, I, I, I wait, um, I end up, you know, uh, waiting until my fingers, I, this bicep wouldn't flex. Uh, it, it was just, yeah. I oh my God. Uh, Are you that stubborn? Y yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I finished training. I finished training and I had a wedding to go to. And so uh, I'm with my wife and kids and we're driving down the road and I, I driving and I'm driving with my left hand on this thing and I reach over and it's like my arm, it's like, you know, even just sitting here like this, this bicep feels like jello. And so I, I try to flex it and it won't flex. And it's like, and I can't get it to flex. 
And uh, I'm like, what the fuck? This is crazy. It's like, I can't get it to flex. And I, I'm over here, you know, trying to do this and trying to get it to, get, you know, trying to flex my arm and it won't flex. And uh, um, so I called my doctor. I, I, I was friends with him and uh, I go, hey, I'm ready to have the surgery. <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I got to do this, this, and this, but it's like, let's get it scheduled. And so he called me the next day and we, we scheduled the surgery and uh, I had the surgery, I think two weeks later. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's when they discovered that I'd fractured that vertebrae. Oh you know? my God. So it's like, I trained for, you know, for, you know, with, and fought with that fractured vertebrae. And then I was like, you know, okay, afterwards, I'll, I'll probably be okay. You know, it's like, it's like, we'll see, you know, it's like, and stuff like that. And I was just never quite the same human again. Um, uh, have you ever thought about microdosing with uh, psilocybin? Yeah, I've, I've looked at it. I don't know if I would like that, you know, may, it may be okay. I don't know. You know, it's like, uh, um, I, I've, you know, as far as the one thing that I, you know, What's crazy is I didn't know this till really, really recently. You know, and now keep in mind when I had that surgery, that's when TRT is real big. I had, had my testosterone checked, uh, and I was like 850. Uh, um, you know, I don't know, 2004, 2006, somewhere in there. It, it's like whenever I had my, and so I had a high, you know, like that's considered like 18 year old testosterone. Or, you know, so I I done. Yeah, I've done my blood work and I never did it again until real recently. Um, and uh, you know, but one of the side effects of having a fusion is, is it lowers your testosterone. And I didn't know that. Nobody ever mentioned that to me. I'd never done any research and stuff like that. I, I have my testosterone checked and I come back low. You know, so I went from 850 15 years ago to, I'm now low, you know, it's like way too low. And so uh, I went on testosterone replacement therapy and I, I would have went and did that, uh, you know, when it was legal, uh, you know, I, I would have been back fighting. You know, it's like, uh, it's like, I thought I just wasn't the same human anymore. And it, it killed my testosterone. And it's like, and I wasn't the same human uh, for, you know, better part of 10, 12 years. If I were to make a recommendation in regards to psilocybin, you don't get high from it. It's like yeah. taking an aspirin. All it does is it just, it allows your brain to, you know, the, the that connectivity to increase. Yeah. And, and yeah. So you, why would that help, help me? Uh, you know, just, uh, just curious. You're a fighter. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you've obviously, you know, you've taken punches. Yeah. Um, you're a smart guy. Yeah. And it, it also kind of knocks the anxiety off. And I'm not saying you have that, yeah. but I, I think anybody that has fought at high levels of mixed martial arts should I at least have, explore it. I, I think I have some social anxieties. I think that's why I don't like crowds and stuff like that. You know, it's like a large groups of people. I, I definitely prefer conversations with, you know, a couple people. I don't like, you know, the only time I feel comfortable is like when I'm teaching class to a large group. I, I, I don't mind that at all. Uh, you know, running class because everybody has a job and these are my friends and stuff like that. But even like going to a party where it's the same people, I have, you know, like some sort of social anxiety that I get. Um, I just really dislike it. You know, it's like, and so it's like, uh, um, I, 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 I enjoy conversations, uh, but I don't want to have a conversation with five people that's too many. It's like, there's, <laughs> it's, uh, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I hate teaching to a small class. I much prefer to teach to 30, 40 people, uh, uh, than, than, a, than a couple people, but you know, I, I'm aware that I have some social stuff that, you know, it's like, I don't know. Well, it, 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 right? You know, microdosing does not change what you like to do. It doesn't change how you act. It doesn't change what you like to eat. None of that changes. All it does is it allows your brain to operate at a higher level than you're normally used to. It's like getting on TRT, except for your mind. Yeah. So, you know, it's like the, the TRT thing. I, I haven't really told anybody about it. I just tell you, you guys and whoever your listeners are. But, <laughs> There's not many. It's, it's, it's a well-kept secret. <laughs> I figure if it helps somebody, you know, it's like, I wish I would have known. 
you know. Well, so- I think I think what you just described to is what would have been a legal like you would get an exception. You go back in and you go, look, I got my neck fused. The doctors say that that lowers my testosterone. Now I need help. I could have would have been right I, on. I could have fought more years, and that that my career would have ended. I'm too old now. It's like it's and it's illegal now. But at the time, it was legal, and it was legal for quite a few years. I could have had, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's like I, it was illegal in 2010. You know, it's like I, I wish I would have known. You know, it's like I just thought that something happened. You know, it's like where I just wasn't all of a sudden. You got old. Yeah, you thought you I, got old. I felt like I got old at 37 yeah. years old. But, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be 49 this year. And, you know, it's like, I, I you know. Now I, you feel better. You feel better. Yeah. You, you, I feel better. you know, it's like, I feel better. It's like, and, you know, I still train. I still train six days a week. Uh, you know, I, I, I still do, you know, it's like, um, unless I'm injured or sick or something like that, or I'm on vacation. Uh, I, I'm, a, you know, I teach six days a week. You know, and that means I train six days a week. I prefer, yeah, I don't train in every class like i used to because i i am old uh you know it's like and it just doesn't work and my neck hurts and things like that you know so i but i tried to train once a day so it's like uh i i enjoy you um you're a robot dude man no dude you're 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 savage throwback throwback. that i know that had a a three-level fusion that i that i know of uh in their neck and that's that's boss you know and um i think pet militich may have too Militich, I think I had one or two. It's like okay. it's, there, there's there's a bunch of guys with one fusion. I have I have a guy in my gym that trains. He's he's gonna be like 68 now, and he had the fusion before he started training with me 24 years ago, uh, and and he's never had problems with anything like that. But there's a big difference between one and three. You know, it's like uh, and I'm pretty sure Militich had one one guy. Yeah, I don't know how many Strasser had, but Strasser Strasser two. Been- yeah. Strasser had a motorcycle accident, had a fusion. I don't know how many, but yeah. he came back. He came back after 11 months and fought Lytle to a draw. So, Did like, really? you know, wow. yeah, so he's a, but he was young when it happened. Yeah, yeah. Either way. Miguel, we've taken a ton of Travis's time. Yeah. No, it was great to up. catch up, man. I, nah, you know, dude, fantastic. I, it, it reaffirmed what. What I think I remembered and was that my Mike used the word is is that you you're a throwback dude. And yeah, he's throwback. In the, start, in the start of the interview, where it's like, yeah, you moved your whole life to Texas. You know, some people are like, yeah, he moved to college. No, you were looking for jujitsu. You know, and it's yeah, like right. the only reason I love Texas. It's like I, I'm really really happy I'm here. But the reason I came here was for jujitsu. You know, so it's, yeah, it's it's just it's an amazing Carlos story that in California. So. that you don't hear anymore is like the, the dedication and like the lifetime dedication. The discipline. You know, you could have been a lawyer and a doctor with the amount of time you dedicated <laughs> to studying yeah. jujitsu. You know what I mean? So my sister's a doctor. I have to ask you. Yeah, my sister's a doctor. My, my brother just got into law, uh, into medical school. Uh, um, he's 20 <laughs> years younger than me. Uh, yeah. so they're, they're, you know, it's like so yeah, but I, I much prefer doing jujitsu than I do. I want to do that. So <laughs> jujitsu is like there's there's people that are supposed to be doctors that are now coaches at jujitsu gyms. Jujitsu is it saves people's lives, but it also ruins them as well. I mean, it really does. <laughs> no, it I, depends. I, no, that, that I wouldn't have been happy doing that. You know, yeah, like, for sure. Happy for sure, I say that in jest. Yeah. Yeah, and and Good. and the the other part is is I I knew I remember this is one of the genuine guys I don't and and you really haven't changed much you were always very honest very forthcoming and like you said don't, you know you don't like to tell a million people but one on one very very much impressed with the interview dude I thought you'd be more quiet I was like yeah it's gonna be yeah. quiet and he doesn't and, do and many interviews you're, you're doesn't awesome. do many. I don't no. shoot them out. You know, if somebody asks and, you know, it's like, yeah, no problem. You know, it's like, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy a conversation one-on-one. You know, it's like, you know, a couple guys, that's fine. You know, it's like, there have been five of you. No, I don't want to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Yes. Thanks so much, brother. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, Mike, another Lights Out podcast in the books. And uh, we've gone long with Travis Luter. And I'm, you know, happy to catch up with the guys. This may be our longest podcast. It's also... You know, one that's wall to wall, 
you know, a guy just being honest all the way through, you know, not a lot of shenanigans coming from Travis. That's the way he was back then. And that, it's still the way he is now. I, I like the guy. I, I'm a fan. Yeah. He doesn't do a lot of interviews. So it's a good get on our part. Obviously we've got a relationship with him based on you booking him with the ADCC as well as hook and shoot. So it kind of made the transition of feeling each other out you know, a lot easier because you know, there was a past history there. And you had mentioned me on several occasions. He's one of your favorite fighters to deal with. Just no frills, no bullshit, super confident, you know, and, you know, not real boisterous, just quiet and to himself. Like you've described him that way, you know, to me on you know, more than one occasion. I think the one surprising thing is there's a blind item. He wouldn't, he wouldn't give certain names. There's two blind items. The first blind item is with Kevin Holland. It's got to be somebody he beat. And it's got to be, you know, I, I know we, he, in 2020, he fought three or four times. It's probably in a 2020 batch. Do you know those names, Miguel? We can kind of throw them out so people can guess. Yeah, he fought a ton in 2020. And they were a lot, he had a big winning streak in 2020. He went undefeated. So it could be any of those fights. Anthony Hernandez, Joaquin Buckley, Darren Stewart, Charlie Oliveros, Ronaldo Souza. Okay, Jack Ryan. Okay, now that's one blind item. The second blind item. And it's pretty easy to narrow this one down. Like I almost said it just to kind of be a jerk, but you know, he didn't want to name it. Um, current UFC employee making him pay an airplane ticket back. So in essence, that person was working somewhere else and that there was an acquisition in order to kind of uh, thread that needle. He had to appease the person that he was fighting for. Pretty easy. Mike Crane Crowbar. I think he used, he used to be one of your former employers, if I had to guess. Um, <laughs> that's, that's right out with that. So. You know, and, and Travis is a guy, he doesn't have a long resume, but it's a, it's a stout one. I mean, the bottom line is, is you're talking about like a frontline guy here. There's no doubt. How many fights mind. did he have, Miguel? About 25. Got 25 fights. And I'll give you we the didn't exact get number all. here in a minute. Yeah, we didn't get to. I thought it was under that. I thought it was closer yeah, to. Yeah, 22. 16. Yeah, something in that neighborhood. 16 and 7, I think is his final yeah, record. 21, 22. No, no, actually, he's got 10 and 6. Okay, so 16. Okay, total. Total. So, so now wait a minute. We've got 16 fights, and we do 16 fights in under two hours normally. And this took us over the three hour mark, so, oh, closer to four hour mark. So it just kind of speaks volumes of the type of competitors that he went up against. Yeah, there was a lot to talk about. Everybody, yeah. and you know, everybody remembers. I, I saw something on the internet where, like, you know, one of the most shameful things that happened in the UFC, and like, he he was in the top five for not making way for the Anderson Silva fight, which you know, it, it is it was an opportunity. He explains it here. You know, it's it's a sad thing there, but again, you know, they give him Rich Franklin next. He goes 0-2 there, and they cut him. Yeah, you know, I. I just don't see it. I think, I think, you know, you have a guy that you can get a lot of work out of and he was still looking to compete after that. So I think they made a mistake and they, they didn't get everything they could have out of him. And the thing that, that reminded me here is, and you know, like I said, a stout resume, first of all, a tough winner, that ain't easy, especially with a, 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 being a, a guy with a personality like him that don't like people being, you know, that's a <laughs> mental, you know, that's a <laughs> mental, <laughs> Sure to be in that house and a two time North American Abu Dhabi qualifier. He won it the first time. Maybe it wasn't that hard. He came back. He actually beat John De Rivera when Brazilian, good Brazilians were coming up here to do them. And he took one of them out. He took an all timer yeah. out. So, you know, that the qualifiers, the tough win, the championship fight with Anderson Silva, this guy's got nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Well, you know, Miguel, there's got to be something gratifying too. When somebody from a foreign country comes to your qualifier, even though they're not you know, from that country, they spend all that money to get there thinking, let me just walk through and get to the ADCC just through an easier path. And you send them home you know, with their bags. That's that's it's a nice thing to do. I like that. Yeah, you know, it, 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 the thing is, is it looks even better now because the uh, Alexander Ribeiro went on to do huge things in Abu Dhabi and beyond that, you know? I mean, yeah. he went from being Salo's brother to being his own guy, bigger, you know, Jeff Munson described him as much more dangerous than Salo yes. because of his size and things like that, for example. In so, our Munson interview. 
in our books yeah, and interviews you said that. That's correct. So, so now well, Miguel, in retrospect, that's an even bigger win. A hundred percent. Now, Miguel, we're about to break four hours on this. Yeah. So I hope everybody that. listening has got Wi-Fi hooked up because this is ridiculous and we're, it's really long, but very good interview. A quiet guy, we got over three hours with. You know, we got a lot of information out of somebody that doesn't like to give the information. And that's what I think that kind of separates us from everybody else. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, Miguel, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And great find, Miguel. This was Miguel's pick. Miguel's like, no, we got a real in looter. So I, I'm very happy, Miguel. Good job. Yeah, and he went he went beyond giving us giving us insights and stuff like that. And uh, basically, uh, everybody like, share, subscribe, comment. We got a lot of hardcore fans out there. And really, this one's one for the hardcore guys because no one out there knows Travis Luter, really knows him like as a person because he's a, 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 an introvert. And now yeah. you've got three hours with him. You're going to get to know him. So thank you. for, Or we've gotten to know him rather. So thank Absolutely. you. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.